ba da ba ba do. Hey. Hi, everybody. How are you? I almost fucked up right before. I do all these tests and I almost fucked up. I had the, the show playing in the background again. Again. I don't know why I always do this. Happens every fucking time. Now I closed all the windows. How is everybody doing? Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Let's bring the chat up here. Hi, everybody. Let's see who's here in the chat room. Hi. Robin's here. Andy Cruz. Dropkick unbleached. Lossless. Where's Lossless? I'm here. You tried to scare me away. I was so scared. I was going to quit the internet. Oh, but I'm here. Wah. You lose. You lose. You lose, bitch. Robin says, am I on drugs? I don't know. You tell me. Fact and mushrooms here. Happy trans awareness or some shit. Yes, ab absolutely. Robin's here, by the way. Um, Robin's been getting a lot of slander. So, hold on. Let me put my cool guy glasses on for this. So, I want to I give some respect to Robin. Robin's been getting a lot of slander. A lot of slander. She's been referred to what is called a condo girl. This is what's been said. Robin, my girlfriend of nine years, lots of slander from many people, saying she's uneducated, she has no hobbies. So right at the top, happy Easter, everyone. I want you to know Robin is an educated woman with a college degree, okay? She almost has too many talents, too many of them. Can't even keep track. She ran her own high-end jewelry business. She's GIA and IGI and whatever CIA certified internationally. Makes her own gold diamond jewelry by hand. By hand, she's an artist, she's a fashion icon, and a hard worker and supporter of two children. What have you done? Okay? But you know what? This, this type of stuff, this comes from these guys who are the lowest of the low. And how do you know? How do you know they're the lowest of the low? Well, it's, it's usually a guy whose life has no prospects, no prospects, okay? And he blames it on the Jews, the Jews, rather than his lack of success. And we've seen this all the time. Blame the Jews. The Jews are the reason why I'm not successful. It can't be because I suck. It's the Jews. These same people, right? Their most memorable moment of the last month is listening to MF Doom for the first time in 2024 while rollerblading in a public park. Yes, a guy who gets certified to make less per hour than an Uber driver and can't even afford a car. These are the type of people, man, that claim to be real men, but go to the hardware store and they invest in Black and Decker. My friends. Hold on a second. Let me show you what a real man looks like. This is what a real man has, okay? This is a real man. Do you even know what this shit does? Have you done any work, sir? Let me rip this open. Do you know what this is? Test in the chat room. Do you know what this is? Name it. Name it. Chat, go ahead. Tell me what this is. Go ahead. You have five seconds. Five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Is it a, it's a drill? Is it a drill? No. It's an impact driver. You wouldn't even know. I could pull shit out of here. What is this? What is this? Name this shit. Name any of it. When you see a man with Black & Decker on his desk, 
not DeWalt or Milwaukee. That's not a real man, okay? He's never built anything himself. He fucking sucks at everything he does. He prophesies. I'm the best. I'm the most entertaining. I'm here to teach you all to get no viewers whatsoever. Oh, boy. Is that enough energy for you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Black and Decker, have you ever laid hands on a real fucking tool? You probably couldn't name half of the things. I mean, can you bevel an edge or cut a sheet of half-inch tempered glass? And if they're lucky, they can like poorly sink an anchor into a piece of drywall using the wrong gear on the drill or something. By the way, not just an impact driver, okay? Do you know what this is? You guys know? Come on. Sam's Choice, Infected Mushroom. Get the fuck out of here with that shit. <laughs> Come on. It's an impact driver. DeWalt, 20 volt max. Technically 18 volts, okay. Atomic, lithium ion, cordless, brushless, compact, quarter inch impact driver. Shout out to Milwaukee fuel line as well. And uh, don't tell me about being a man when you've never actually built. All you can do is mount. Mount TVs and men in the ring of life. That's about it. And uh, with that said, there's only one word for a guy like this, you know, condo girls. And it's homosexual. That's what this man is. When you see this man, he's a homosexual. And that's really it. I think it's more, all this whole thing that's been going on, it's really about having sex with me, I think. I think it's all these men want to fuck me in the ass. <laughs> all the bits revolve around gay dates to Red Lobster and all this shit. It's very homosexual behavior. And it's just funny because these people have now been so selfish that they have sabotaged their own shows to talk about me. Me, who sucks so much. I'm the worst. It's so boring. This sucks. But let's spend an entire fucking show watching it. And then, uh, let's not even do that. Let's go and read the messages about it. All to get the attention, but then in the end, all of you've done is spend your attention on me. Me! Paying attention to me! Not you. By the way, cheers. All right, let's calm down. It's Easter. Happy Easter, everybody. I'm happy that you're here. And, uh, yep, happy to be here. H2BH. Not that other shit. You're stealing. You're stealing. By the way, I just wanted to show you some research I've done. Oh, if you could see here, uh, this is the average uh, salary for a forklift certified man, eighteen twenty-one per hour. Turns out, and my friend uh, Andy can verify this. Uber driver, eighteen forty-seven an hour. Who would have guessed? Weird, right? Oh, that's weird, man. Shout out to my Uber drivers out there. You get us where we need to go. You sometimes talk to us when we don't want to talk to you. But we love you. And we salute our Uber drivers and our DoorDash drivers and our Uber Eats guys and our Instacarters and all those people out there. We support you and salute you. And I feel you. And I wish you a happy Easter, okay? Um, there's a lot of things going on. Hmm, what should I bring up first? Comedy Shaman, by the way, supposedly he's going to return soon. We might see a Comedy Shaman return. Uh, last we heard, Comedy Shaman was in rehab, and I don't think he has any access to talk on a microphone. I did speak with him, okay? So I have spoken with Comedy Shaman. Text only. And he should be returning very soon, probably in a couple of days. I have a lot of questions for him, but I think he wants to go his own way because unfortunately there was, um, <laughs> there was a situation where he got bullied off the internet, essentially, 
this is my opinion comedy shaman was doing a show every week and he might have shared some information about someone and in the end he ended up getting bullied for sharing this information i feel bad for the guy but i hope he's doing okay comedy shaman happy easter to you i hope you're doing okay i don't know if you're in a rehab or in a bed or ever whatever you're doing i hope you're doing okay okay he's uh on the, the kratom the scrotum right so um let's go into the the title here and i have someone who's going to join me later just wait and you'll see uh red bar is actually watching this show and you're going to be like, no, Red Bar's never watching. No, Red Bar's never watching. He's watching, okay? I'm going to give you some examples of why Red Bar is watching. The things that I say, Mike listens to. So, by the way, while you're here, if you want to say something to Mike, put it in the chat room here. Maybe I can share it with him and he'll hear it. I said this on another episode. I said, if I start doing things that Mike will hate it and then he'll stop doing it. So we got to come up with a list. What's like the worst parts of Red Bar that would make it so if he stopped doing it, it would fix it. And then I'll do those things and then Mike will stop doing it. Or I just point things out and here you're going to see. So I don't know if you guys remember last episode and it's funny. And they said, eh, yeah, it's a reach. That's a reach. I compared Mike to Ethan Klein. And I just want to prove it here. So I'm not just making things up, right? So let's go here. Here we go. This is from last episode. So here it is. Mike turning into Ethan Klein, right? People were like, you're connecting dots, man. You're connecting dots. It couldn't be more obvious, okay? So here's me talking about it. Little from, hint of how he is slipping right now. Ooh, enjoy. It's Oops. coming. Hello, we are here against all the odds. Uh, the meeting of minds. <laughs> I won't say okay. great because what's a great mind anyway? Fair. But my, and I should say that for myself. Mike's going to explain it to himself. Minds today. Beautiful minds. So this segment here Jeff was basically. Witt. Thank you for having me, my man. Me comparing Mike. Mike, Malik. Like, okay. Getting excited Malik. about all these people well, talking like about him yeah. from uh, Whitney Cummings and Bobby Lee, and he's really excited, right? And I was saying, you know, this is very similar to when Ethan Klein had Big Mike and uh, Jeff Wittick and Tana Mugu in the studio. And they were befriending Ethan because they wanted him to stop talking about their crimes, right? And I pointed it all out and I said, Mike and Ethan Klein are becoming the same person. I said it verbatim. And, and just to be clear. And to have a connection, you know, you get the idea, right? Leads way more lesbians. When Obeyman. You and Ethan Klein okay. are now the same fucking guy. Ex okay. Except more lesbians, all that. You guys remember it, okay? So now, let me bring up what he does on, like, the latest episode. And you're going to see it. And you guys are going to be like, no! No! Okay. He starts out the episode with a fake tattoo of Ethan Klein's dog Shredder on his neck. This is just a coincidence? Yeah, okay. I think not, okay? And this isn't the only thing. I'm gonna show you more. Mike responds to me. Mike is watching. Not Red Bar, Mike. Mike and Jules, they're both watching. Let's see. Uh, the Grim Reaper, Red Bar in the Wild segment is boring. Talk about that. Yep, I will get into that. It is a lot of that. A lot of his show is just playing other people mentioning him. That It's weird. Who else does that? Hmm. It's weird. Red Bar in the Wild. That's not a good thing. When it's such a regular segment now, we're, we're going to see that like mainstream YouTubers are bringing him up. True or a Oh, this is crazy because it's not even the... 
it's not even the whole thing, like, the Bobby Lee shit, too. So last episode, I brought up how, like, the reason I compared him to Ethan Klein was because the Ethan Klein situation is very similar to when Mike was watching Bobby Lee and Whitney Cummings covering him. And in the end, Mike got ups, uh, upset because they ended up editing him out. But he was so excited when he saw them do it. And he's like, oh my God, they, they recognize us. They said, I'm important. I'm important. And Whitney Cummings, they end up editing that whole segment out of the actual released version so that somebody filmed it live. I guess it's it streams live and someone recorded it. So that's how he knows that it even happened. And they removed the whole part, which is weird. And I kept saying, we're catching Mike slipping here. Mike is slipping. And then now on this latest episode, you're going to see he's, uh, he's totally changed his tune. He's like, he's trying to catch up and be like, okay, no. Uh, yeah, fuck Bobby Lee again. And we're going to start looking into his sexual crimes again all of a sudden. You know, uh, <laughs> it is not a coincidence, guys. It is not a coincidence. Here we go. Let me see. True or a lie. Uh, but I really want to go on record here to say that there's nothing that we're making up. Sure, our opinions, maybe you uh, disagree with the opinions, but that's very different than well, this is he this makes is the last one. stuff up, right? So if you're going to say I make stuff up, I, I need a list of what I've made up, and it should be pretty easy if that's the first thing you said about me publicly. Otherwise, it's court time. <laughs> Uh, I watch a lot of H3 podcasts, and I'm no stranger to... Oh, my God. Why are you admitting that? Discovery. <laughs> and if people are going to say, especially Bobby Lee, the very rich Bobby Lee. Music, yeah, this could be a slam dunk for me. I could use a few hundred thousand dollars to beef up my... Okay, shut up. Just shut the fuck up. Okay, get out of here. All right, I'm going to show you here. So... I can just show you any random clip because he's just showing it off. Sure. And, and you know what? I think it might be time for a new rock. So here we go right here. You can see right there. Look at here. He talks about it and stuff. There it is. Ha ha ha. Shredder tattoo. A fake tattoo that he put on. And then at the end of the episode, he's like, oh, Shredder, Shredder. I love you, Shredder. Sue Party did 9-11. Thank you, sir. Unban me from chat at once. You're not banned from the chat. I see you in the chat, Sue Party. Uh, so here you go. He put the, the shredder on there. The week after I said he's Ethan Klein, he's now doing a whole bit. Do you see? Do you see? I can say things and Mike turns it into a whole bit. It's like when I had Rich Facet going fucking nuts and making the worst diss track no offense rich against mike uh messaging mike and then mike made a whole crime board and everything it's the same thing uh another thing i noticed is mike keeps bringing up lolly and you're gonna go well what is that you know what does that have to do with it it was after a couple of episodes i covered vosh the whole controversy with Vosh. And that's a guy that Red Bar has no fucking clue about. Do you think he cares about Vosh? And then it was the episode after this, actually. He mentioned it for the first time. Uh, let's see. I'll bring it out here. Yep, yeah, this episode here. And lolly porn of horses having sex with children. Lolly the kids. And a lot of this anime stuff feeds into this culture, too. It's it's weird. Anime stuff, okay, right? So, same shit. He's bringing up Lolly. And so, he does this within the Red Bar in the Wild shit. Let's see. Mike to see now, Mike. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Let's see if it's this one. My headphones tripled in volume by themselves. That's a Denny trick. Uh, it's a Denny. Okay, so he knows Red Bar. Man, everything sounds weird to me now. Test one, two, three. Okay. Let's hear that one more. Okay, this is a weird... This one is a weird YouTuber that's like bringing up Mike. Look how corny this is. 
The guy does the give it a year and then listen to the sound effect that he uses. Watch. What time? Nadeem. Is it worth paying for it? I don't know, man. Give it a year. Maybe it is. And that is illegal. What just happened there is illegal. I'm sorry. To me now. Test one, two, three. Okay. Let's hear that one more time. Nadeem. Is it worth paying for it? I don't know, man. Give it a year. Maybe it is. This is a red bar fan. This is a red bar fan. This is now a red bar fan. Adjust any look alike a Melton. Look alike a what's the other guy's name? The other ginger fat guy. Ginger fat guys love your show and they're all very corny. He couldn't even use the real bomb sound effect. He uses like a fake copy and even the bomb sound effect is gay. Yeah, and everything sounds weird to me now. Test one, two, three. Okay. Let's hear that one more time. Nadeem. Is it worth paying for? I don't know, man. Give it a year. Maybe it is. <laughs> and sure, maybe you have an audience that's really devoted and can keep you afloat, but without being on YouTube... Your growth is either oh, stuck. Okay, yeah, growth, growth. That's all these guys care about, huh? Growth, oh, yeah. not here. Not this here. This is the only show that does not care about growth. We grow very, very slowly. One of the smaller... We don't care about growth. We're just celebrating the most famous of comedians mentioning me. We don't care about growth, guys. Be very suspect of these guys, okay? Because there's so many of them. There's so many of these guys who say, oh, we're just doing this for fun. None of this matters. This is just for fun. We don't care about views. We'd rather have eight people who love us than a hundred people with Fairweather fans. You're a liar. You're a liar. Why are you lying? You put so much effort into this shit. You're spending so much time and energy oh it's a hobby it's a hobby time is money time is money you are not doing it as a hobby you are not doing it for fun that is cope that is cope okay everything about that whole it's all for fun is cope mike would love to be fucking famous look at the way he's dressed the way the set is designed the whole show is designed to be I want to be a famous late night talk show guy. And if the world allowed for this to be a mainstream show, he would absolutely become one. He wants to be a talk show guy. I mean, I have another, there's so many, I have another clip here where he's talking about he wants to expand the studio even more. He hasn't even walked to that side of the studio where the drum set is and used any of it, but he wants to now add more. He just wants the big extravagant studio and he says, I want it to be a late night show. It's a lie. It's a lie. You wouldn't be on YouTube marketing at all. You wouldn't let these clippers be posting all these clips. Mike said it was during a symposium episode or something. Red Bar is like Fight Club. What is Fight Club? It's something you don't fucking talk about. So then why is it that everyone's talking about it? Why is it some corny YouTuber? And we're going to see multiple Hassan Piker, Destiny. They're trying to get them to mention Red Bar. Is that really who you want knowing about Red Bar? The shows for being this famous is this Red Bar. Thank you, Nadeev. Nadeev. And thank you to whoever sent that in. I wouldn't have seen that one. Thank you. You're a liar. You're Mike, you're a liar! You see all of this? I'm convinced Mike just makes up fake fucking people and says that they sent sent him the clips. And it's always, oh, I've never seen this. I've never seen this. I'm not sitting home 24-7 looking up clips trying to figure out who's talking about me. He's seeing this fucking horseshit show. You think he's not seeing Nadine? Should we do one more wild and then we'll get on with it, okay? Because we got to get one through more like wild. Said, 30 of these. What would be a good one, you think? I don't know, Mike. Destiny on here? Oh, God. What a Destiny. Destiny. I know, I don't remember. He's, he's trying to tap into who are the people, guys like you in the chat, or me would tune into. He's trying to tap into those people. He's trying to find, like, where do I find new Red Bar fans? Maybe Destiny guys, because Destiny's kind of like, 
He's not super conservative. He's not super liberal. He's kind of a center guy with some values that are kind of very liberal. Like he likes to have his wife fuck other men and be a total cockhold like Mike. And we, I have a clip on that too. There's a clip of Mike playing some guy and zooming in on his black dick bulge and uh, Jules is getting excited. Red Bar and the Wild Destiny who got into a big screaming match with some Palestinian guys, right? Yeah. And Jordan Peterson. He's had a big week. Do we know Destiny? He's a, a Twitch streamer. Please tell me, would you have ever imagined Mike to bring up a Twitch streamer, let alone Destiny? Okay. Let's see what happened here. Here's Destiny. Sent in a Red Bar in the Wild by Luis Ramirez. Uh oh. They're always Mexican yeah, names. <laughs> he's just got, he's got a book of fake Mexican names. Uh, Juan Gomez. They're always Mexican or Muslim names that are sending these clips. Juan and uh, Nadim Rujam Urgik. For this one, let's see what happens here. Bro. Is four again. This is so, this is so sad. There's too much, you think, it, dude, do you think this is because of the fluoride in the water? And whenever you're happens. feeling sad, remember. Oh, you know, I don't know if this is, oh yeah, it's gotta be, it's a clip. These are streamers. You know, Mike David from Red Bar Radio. No, are you the guy that emails me over and over again saying you should watch their podcast, Shit on Hassan? No, I don't know this guy. What the fuck? <laughs> this, this is their job. Okay, that no, was that. That's getting he knows just now. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. We got like a million of these where they just say the name from somebody in the chat, but that works too. Here, as the last one, since that one was bad. Let me see. Let me look at the rest of this, see if it's worth watching. I think this, I'm trying to see if this one was a song. Yeah, we showed you this on our show. There was a black comic. Okay. Enough of that one. Let me see. Let me find the other one. I'm just going to rapid hey, fire. We also have jewels oh, stop, in the house. Stop, 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 stop. Uh, okay, 4304, we'll show you what happened here, and we basically and another one. the air here. Let's see. If Watch this. Four, perfect. Okay, here he is. In which one? Oh, he's got to be this guy, right? Yeah, remember I was making fun of his Adidas cap. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but this guy's pretty cool. He's pretty, uh, he's got a nice body. This is where I would have like a record scratch sound effect or something, you know? Ooh, look at Whoa, that. Oh, he's look. got a hog on him. What? Well, that's how the comedians say it. We don't oh, use that. Oh, I mean, that. he's got a porker on his. So usually, oh, yeah, you can see this here. What is what is I going can't on? I guys just show this off. So what do girls think about that? Do girls look down here when they see a guy with a bulge? Do they ever look down there? Or is it just so normal to see some stuffing down there? I don't like look there. right down there, but if it's obvious, you'll take a glance. Really? Second glance. <laughs> okay, let's see what he says about Red Bar now. That guy rules. Oh, y'all saw Red Bar talk about me? <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah, Oh, bro. hell yeah. yeah. His fucking wife was on my dick. She said, he looks good. <laughs> <laughs> I said, he's you He's strong. He runs. Yeah. <laughs> now I just did it again. Oh, my dick. <clears throat> Who knows? Oh, hell yeah. She no, on I mean, my it, black uh, dick. It, it, didn't, it wasn't crazy or anything. No, he actually was more so mad at his fans than me. Yeah. He said so the worst thing about me was that I was black. I didn't appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. We're going to go after him because oh, it's oh, 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 oh. Okay. Shut the fuck up, Mike. Okay. Enough of that one. Jules loves black cock. Uh, let's see. Here's Mike Dollars talking about he wants a, a bigger studio. Membership. So thank you guys so much. You know, we're already thinking about uh, the next studio. Bigger, better, more robust. The big Today Show sized studio with different sections. So we're starting to work on that. We're starting to work Why? on this. Uh, we're gonna have Why? A What's the merch. point? And I'm inspired by a lot of old stuff. And I even got, oh, you know what? I left that in there. I've got something that uh, we're going to be doing a limited edition run on some very cool items coming up for our big merch drop this Oh, boy, guys. Summer. Merch drop. And, Are you ready? Uh, you could stay up to date with that. People ask me all the time, Mike, when's merch coming out? You could join our mailing list at redbarradio.net. No, we're not going to join your mailing list. Okay. You're going to have uh, Red Bar Dipe Beast clothing coming soon. 
Uh, okay, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. There's a lot. I'm just going to go and through these because I have more interesting have shit to bring up than this fucking... Up, uh, the Bobby Lee expose, you know, he said... Old shithead. You remember what he said about me on that Whitney Cummings show that's now deleted? Thank God for Sergio, who got the clip of that. Okay, so last week, like I said, I brought it up, guys, that he's slipping, and he brings it up again. They edited him out, and then he's going to cover it's it again. Weird. Let's go through as fast as possible. He just fucking basically brings it up. He's mad. They edited me out. Blah, blah, blah. And he's like, I'm on Bobby Lee's ass again. Uh, for the sex crimes, he said, I was the only one to exonerate Bobby Lee because I had a magic eight ball that told me, no, he didn't uh, rape those little girls in Tijuana or wherever. The whole story of Bobby, which is weird because... Bobby hangs out with all these different chefs, you know, the David Cho, the David Chen, that group of Asian men. All of them have these weird old allegations. You remember Dave, it's David Cho, right? He was the one who painted the murals at Facebook. He has an interesting story, actually, his life story, where he was just like a total degenerate artist, graffiti artist. And um, he was like jumping on trains, hitchhiking on trains across the country to spray graffiti on walls. And just by chance, he came across Mark Zuckerberg when Facebook was being built, the, the offices. And he was given the choice of, hey, do you want X amount in dollars or do you want a percentage of Facebook stock? And for a guy at that point in time in his career where he really wasn't making a lot of money, he chose the stock just by some intuition he decided like hey what the fuck i'll take the stock and then he was worth i think that stock ended up being worth probably a couple hundred million if i'm not mistaken and i think he stupidly held on to a good portion of it but he did sell a lot of it so he got rich off of this and so he became a rich guy and then you got bobby lee hanging out with them and then david chen um it's funny because me and Robin would always eat at that uh, Momofuku, Momofuku, uh, and then the milk bar thing. It was meant Red Bar had mentioned this whole thing, and it's just kind of scary to think that these guys are all like devious. Everyone's a fucking creep now. Everyone's a creep, and it, that's going to be part of the second half of this thing. It's like there was a period in time where we just overlooked all of this heinous behavior, and we thought it was cool. Like back then. We overlooked a celebrity being with an underage person because we thought, hey, they're celebrities. They can do whatever the fuck they want. And it wasn't until now that we're starting to realize, oh, wait a minute, that was statutory rape. You know, like Steven Tyler and all these guys, all these rock stars having sex with underage women. We thought that was badass. Turns out it's actually illegal. Who would have thought? Uh, let's see. Wait, 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 wait. Here's here's another one. Red Bar Copen Dr. Bigger. Just couldn't help himself. Wait. He read the comments on the podcast to see what people thought. So this is another YouTuber covering Mike. I've seen this guy before. I don't know his name. Uh, maybe you guys would know. Oh, God. But Andrew just couldn't yeah. help himself. He read the comments on the podcast to see what people thought. Oh, God, he didn't. He got, he flipped his fucking Like, I get shit, recommended dude. this guy often. So if he's mentioning Red Bar. About the studio. And why are you covering this? It's so old. How, I can't imagine this covering Santino something. Thing. This is seven years old. When is this Santino clip from that he's covering of mine? I like that this is yeah. having this a, is a resurgence. With well, all these I like the resurgence. Too, but let's talk about the new Red Bar. They would be like talking about the old Howard. And yeah. The the good new Howard. Oh, that's something. To wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I missed that part. Uh, yeah. Fuck. There's so much here, guys. Sorry. I'm just going through all of this because he he goes. I do too. In fairness, on tangents, and then it's hard to like clip Mike. You know what I mean? But yeah, there's like stuff within the clip, also. But that was very surprising to I, me I for him to hear that. That says everything I need to know. Covering something. This is seven years old. 
When is the Santino clip from that he's covering of mine? I the like better. That this is having this a was resurgence. With well, all these I like the resurgence. Well, let's Santino's. talk about the new Red Bar. They would be like talking about the old Howard. You know. Yeah. Howard Stern. He's referring the, to the good new Howard. The good Just new Howard. I'm gonna just I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt and say that he's just trying to be contrarian But I don't think so. I think honestly Mike thinks the current Howard Stern is better than the old Howard Stern and I don't care guys I don't care if you were Opie and Anthony fans or Ron and Fez or whatever or Howard Stern whatever the fuck Just just that point in time of terrestrial radio It was like pirate Radio, the essence of it, doing whatever you wanted. Ratings were power. It meant you could say and do whatever you wanted. Whether you liked Opie and Anthony or Howard Stern, very similar shows in a lot of ways, were able to say whatever they wanted and they didn't have to be phony or cater to some political party or offense it because you're afraid that something you say that's even remotely political is going to offend somebody. Oh no, they call me a hook nose. That's anti-Semitic. We need to take your channel down. Everybody report, report anti-Semitism. That was called a hook nose. But you can play a song that says someone has Jew money, and that's totally fine. Ha 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 Fucking clowns. Fuck you. You're all losers. You've lost the plot. Not you in chat, guys. I love you. Happy Easter, everybody. Response to a comment on Twitter about Red Bar talking about their studio. We and he's know. talking about Red Bar as if everybody knows what this Red Bar is. Because they do. Now they do. Nobody knows. This is an underground experience. It's not underground anymore, Mike. You got mainstream YouTubers talking about you on a regular basis with zero fear, might I add. And I said that last time. Nobody's scared anymore. He's trying to recapture that somehow. Like, even he was saying, like, Bobby, you said that I lied. And if you don't retract that statement where you said some of the things I say are lies... I'm gonna find out your sexual past again, and then I'm gonna say you raped those girls in Tijuana. Like, as if he's afraid. None of them care. I think it was a mistake. The reason it was edited out, because Bobby made the dumb mistake of saying he bothers a lot of my friends, or he... Which is in reference to, uh, basically, Andrew Santino, I guess, is a guy who gets offended by Red Bar, or affected. Look at this guy. Look how orange Mike is, by the way. Have you guys noticed this on this episode specifically? Like, something weird's going on here. This is not... Look at that. Guys, this is not normal. This is not natural. He's, like, applying some cream on his face. Look here. Here's his shredder tattoo here. Fake, by the way. What a bit. That's a great bit. I got a faint shredder tattoo, because Ross has called me Ethan Klein. That'll show him. I'm just going to embrace it. No, stop. Be How about stop being like Ethan Klein? Do the opposite. Don't lean into it, Mike. But he's super, super orange. It's almost Trump orange. Like, uh, look. See this orange on his shirt and here? It's almost the same color. Then you could see, like, look at his hand. Not the same color. Not the same color. He's, um... It's like Jules paints his head at the beginning of each show. You could see kind of here. Look at that. Looks like he's burnt, like a burnt chicken nugget. It's oomp. Oh, by the way, oomp. You want to talk oomp? I'm thinking otho. The new Beetlejuice trailer came out. Maybe we should watch that together right after okay. this. Because I'm excited. Here we go. Oh, what is this? This Beetlejuice. This was his response to a comment on Twitter. I heard fucking, um, who was it that uh, brought, I think it was Jimmernam actually that brought up this Beetlejuice or something. Was it Beetlejuice or Ghostbusters? Is this Beetlejuice supposed to be cool? This new Beetlejuice? I don't know. About Red Bar talking about their studio. We know. Report it. Fuck that, that clown. clown. What? Come on. Thank this you. This is insane. The, the video only had like. Okay, thank you for your support. How many views did this get? This got 1.5 million views.
Wow. I mean, wow. consider seventy five percent of those people are new fans. Now you should see the money coming in. Guys, wow. we're turning people away. I'm crediting people back. It's true. Money Guys, can't. this is an underground okay, so experience. One point five million camp. people way, have no, now heard about Red Bar. Know, about every year people go, Oh, I think Red Bar is gonna get big, he's gonna sell out, he's gonna go because that's what everybody else does. You've seen Shane. Shane is like Shane people should be documenting this Shane. Uh, what is his last name? Gillis. Seriously. <laughs> McGillan. What is his last name? Gillis. Mike's Mike's People becoming know. senile, by the way. There's examples of that. I have... <laughs> I mean, I have a lot. I mean, there was a clip where he told this whole story about how he thought he was haunted by demons. And he was trying to do this thing with, like, a Zippo lighter. And he's trying to fill it. And he's trying to be cool to by flicking the Zippo to make it light. And it's just not working. And he's like fiddling with putting the kerosene in it. It's a fucking disaster. I can play a little bit of that and speed run it because there's something funny I noticed in there. I found proof that Mike is poor, basically. You guys are not going to believe it. To document the Shane Gillis period right now because he's changed. <laughs> and he really, he wants to, and I don't think he's going to be living in that Austin, Texas much longer. I think he's going to move back to New York or L.A. because that's where... He wants to hobnob. He wants to be a socialite. You do, Mike. You do. You do. If Mike had his wish, guys, he would love, love. I mean, he's essentially vicariously living that kind of lifestyle. He would love to be like the L.A. guy. He wants to be like a Robert Downey Jr. type who gets to walk the streets of Hollywood. And he's part of the in-group. He's schmoozing with the celebrities. He wants that. And, you know, that's that's another similarity between Mike, not an Ethan Klein. Ethan's already in that universe. But Howard Stern was, it's very similar, the trajectory of their careers. Like Mike, in the beginning, same thing. He was kind of an outcast. And he's angry because he's the outcast. And he's pointing the finger at all the celebrities and shitting on all the celebrities. In his case, it's comedians, okay? Howard, the same thing, the majority of his career was him attacking other shock jocks who were competing with him or celebrities in general because he was, he didn't fit into the Hollywood scene. And once Howard became a billionaire and he got enough money, he started feeling himself like, hey, I'm successful. I'm a fucking billionaire. He started to schmooze with the celebrities. He did a, this was years and years back, he did Howard in Hollywood. And he actually moved and made a studio in Hollywood temporarily. I think it was a week or so. And he was bringing in like Robert Downey Jr. and uh, Jimmy Kimmel and all of these guys from Hollywood to sit down with him and become friends with them. And not just friends as in like, hey, you're on my radio show and I'm interviewing you. No, friends as in let's hang out in real life. And now Howard has finally gotten the adulation he always wanted. He's accepted by Hollywood. He tried to erase his whole history. Like this man here. He wants you not to know about his history. He doesn't want you to know he made the N-Bop song or any of the other heinous stuff that he made that might offend people today. He wants to pretend it never existed and bury it. I know you guys can clarify this if you're subscribed to Mike. I know his archive is in there, but it doesn't it only go back to like a certain point and then it stops? Like a lot of the old, 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 old shit is missing? Or you can correct me if I'm wrong. If ever is every episode really on there? Or has he started uh cleaning out cleaning house? Cause that's what Howard did. He basically told people, don't watch miss him uh don't watch uh private parts of the movie don't read private parts of the book don't read miss america the book those two th those three things don't exist anymore they're not part of me that's the old me now i've been through therapy and i'm better after he made his billions basically being the shock jock he, he was being fake the whole time that's what you basically learned like howard was catering and pandering back then weirdly to liberals I don't know, it's so weird the world is backwards now. Because what would be considered a conservative today was essentially a liberal in Howard Stern's time. I mean, Howard wasn't fighting 
SJW, none of that weird part in time, uh, that phase and period of, you're an SJW, you're the girls crying when Trump got elected. No, like all that stuff wasn't around. Back then it was, oh no, the religious right, the conservative party, the old farts, they were the uncool ones. Those are the ones who are trying to censor you and fine you for saying curse words. Those are the ones who find the Super Bowl because Janet Jackson's nipple accidentally popped out with a war wardrobe malfunction. It was like Justin, yeah, it was Justin Timberlake and Janet Jackson, I believe, dancing in the Super Bowl and her nipple popped out. And they got like major fines. It was always the conservatives trying to censor and get rid of now everything's backwards. So yeah, in that time, coward, uh, Howard, coward, coward Stern, catered to the people who were more liberal, that were more about sexuality and wanted to hear the curse words and all the heinous stuff. So now the grift is the other way around. Mike was grifting the neoconservative party by being the guy who says the N-word and says edgy stuff and does all that shit. I'm going to bury your kids and stuff, and I'm going to find Tripoli's kids and dig them up and have an uh, essay with them. Now he's not that way anymore. Now he's just tame. So not here. He made his money. Look at look at the studio, guys. He fucking snatched it from you. Biggest heist. Here though, no one ever needs to worry about that. Here, I have a very strict rule. I will not make friends with anybody else who works online. Okay, so. That could get you. I caused Mike to make a new rule. You in a lot of trouble. What happens is if you make friends with people, it's very hard to hate them or criticize them or criticize their friends because you want to stay cool. So the trick to this, the trick to Red Bar, you got to hate everybody. Okay, so uh, Beef Turkey in the chat. Hey, Beef Turkey, thank you for joining us. Beef Turkey says he has cleaned out. I check. I checked like a month ago. Yeah, same thing. Kif Dunnage is here. Kif Dunnage, thank you. Robin is in cahoots with Tim Horton's fortune is the word out there. Yeah, yeah. you better watch out. Don't talk shit about Robin, if, especially if you live in the Ontario area. Uh, scary stuff could happen. Uh, Dark Brandon, I like it. Dark Brandon 46. That demon story is the most entertaining thing I've ever seen on Red Bar. Okay, um, there's a part of that story. I'm not. I'm not gonna go through it actually, because it's too long, and I don't want to be on here forever. He tells this whole story about how he took this supplement recipe to get himself to go to sleep, and part of it was like L-theamine or something. And if you take 200 milligrams of it, you might have night terrors. And he goes on and on for 20 minutes over the sound bed of a scary music going. I went to sleep. My grandmother had this book and it was a Jewish book and they said it was cursed and then blah, blah, blah. I then fast forward him going to bed with this recipe that he heard from a guy on YouTube and he takes too much L-theamine and he has night terrors. And he talks about how he woke up in his mind, but he was still sleeping in the dream. He woke up and then he went into the living room and his smoke detector was going off the smoke alarm and he's like what's going on and he hits it with a broom and then he says all these things went crazy and all these things were flying around and it was the most terrifying experience and then i woke up and i told jules and she was laughing at me and the only takeaway from that i got was that he has smoke alarms with batteries in it you don't have hardwired smoke alarms Poor, poor Mike. You're broke. You're brokey. No chirping in this place. All right. It's you against Normie the entire only. internet. Normie friends only. And I've been picking up some new friends. I go to restaurants. I talk to people. I bring them into my life. I've made about. Six to seven new I don't friends that. this month by reaching out to people in the community and bringing them into my world. <laughs> I don't know what's so fun. Oh, this catch this here. <laughs> Even Jules knows he's bullshitting. 
But look, he's like, I don't know why that's so funny. I've made about six to seven <laughs> new friends this month by reaching out to people in the community and bringing them into my world. <laughs> I don't know what's so funny about that. Neither do we, my internet. Normie friends only. And I've been picking up some new friends. I go to restaurants. I talk to people. I bring them into my life. I've made about six to seven new friends this month by reaching out to people in the community and bringing them into my world. I don't know what's so funny about that. Okay. Come on, guys. What's going on here? All right, let me look at the chat room. People are going crazy. People are going crazy. Easy E's very upset. Hi, Easy E. He says, You've exposed him, bro. How about I'm just criticizing the man? What is the expose? You know, what am I going to find out? If I find out that Red Bar has committed actual crimes yeah i'll tell you that i guess that would be an expose but i'm just criticizing the man same way he does everybody else these are valid criticisms are they not are they not they are and guys we have a direct line to mike why are you trying to fuck it up why are you trying to fuck it up i brought up that he's ethan klein he's got a shredder tattoo now he's talking about ethan klein i talked about the lolly he's talking about lolly he's talking about destiny and twitch streamers now we have a connection to mike tell me what you want me to tell mike give your honest opinion it's a safe space here guys you can make fun of mike and criticize him i'm sure you're not using you know the same username that you use in the bbg which by the way there is some people who do that they use a different name and it would be very scary to them if people found out what their name was um like this guy by the way so if you're in the bbg uh gleral from linden this is actually uncle podcast so mike if you're out there the guy Uncle Podcast who is bugging you and bugging you to play the clip of me and Mark Harley and Mark Harley doing the impression of you. This is Uncle Podcast with a fake name. And uh, he's been catching heat in the BBG for sharing all of these videos from a Red Bar channel that cover Mike's history and basically docks all of Mike's old friends following him to Tucson. So Gleral from Linden equals Uncle Podcast. And uh, that's a tip from you, straight from Chris. Thank you, Uncle Podcast. We love you. Hope that works out well for you. Okay, a couple Red Bar in the wilds. We've got another Hassan Piker here. Hassan Piker now. And guys, if you sent me these, you want to, your reward money. Remember, people get $100 cash if they uh, get us in the wild, right? Has anyone actually gotten this $100 cash? Can someone confirm if they've ever sent in a red bar in the wild and gotten the cash? Um, Bleach says, Uncle P -S. You said it, not me. He deleted his whole Instagram, by the way. We're really fishy. He created, so this guy, um, it's funny how everything comes full circle. Clipper Dunn turned on the clipper done turned it's essentially what happened here so he showed up to my channel he's like he he's like a weird guy who kind of like love bombs creators he's usually uh very young women but now he's uh moved on to grown adult men and he swoons you with the timestamps and the clipping and it's funny all of his timestamps on anything he's ever done is just a list of Lossless says this, lossless does that, lossless mention, lossless, 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 three minutes, lossless, four minutes, lossless, ten minutes, lossless, mentioned again, and then he makes an Instagram account dedicated to me, by the way, and he blocks me from even viewing it, the only reason I heard about it is because somebody sent me a screenshot and they're like, hey, 
Have you seen? And now he's, he's denying that he made it. You're an idiot. I know it's you. It's not hard to figure out. You're very autistic in the way you interact on the internet. You spastically follow a million accounts very quickly. I've seen all 20 different accounts you have. Uh, you're terminally online. And then also you latch on to like the worst jokes that other people say and you repeat them. You're very predictable and easy to spot uncle podcast i don't know why you think you're <laughs> you're you're very sly and secretive i know it was you that popped into the panel that robin was doing that day about the whole mental hospital thing it's not hard so he created this whole instagram dedicated to me then blocks me from seeing it so um it, what is the point if i can't see it if you're so if you're gonna trigger me with it when do you want me to see it and get upset jeez but uh, go ahead, run with it. And uh, Gleerol from Linden in the BBG is Uncle Podcast. So there you go. Have fun with that. Uh, here we go. Bushy Doki. I hope Red Bar does a Red Bar on you. Then you Red Bar him. So it's Red Bar, Red Barring, Red Bar while Red Barring. Yes. Well, you know what? He will never mention me, guys. He's not going to mention me, but we have a direct line to him where he will listen to what I say. He will listen to what I say. Ethan Klein got the Shredder tattoo. Talked about Lolly and Vosh. He talks about Lolly now. He does it in the, the Bobby Lee coverage. He talks about how Bobby Lee and uh, Andrew Santino, Bad Friends podcast, they had on, what's the Bobby Altoff? Bobby Altioff? And Red Bar was covering that podcast about how creepy they both were being to this Bobby Altioff talking about how they want to sniff her feed and being very sexual with her. And Bobby refers to Bobby Altoff as a, el it looks like a little elven girl or something. And then it leads Mike to start going, lolly, lolly. Yeah, she's like a little lolly. That's essentially what they're saying. When they say it looks like an elven little girl, they're saying she looks like a lolly girl. He's like obsessed with lolly now. Just because I covered it. And then, um... What was the other thing? I mean, there's a bunch of it. Tell me. Tell me what you want to tell Mike. I am a sick man. Lossless is watching. Lossless is stalking. Lossless is criticizing. Unbleached. Hey, Unbleached. He says Jules has a snagged tooth. Me personally, I don't make fun of Jules. Jules, I would not make fun of your personal appearance i have no issue with if anything i think jules is red bar okay she's the one producing if not for her this wouldn't even exist at all okay she's doing a lot of the work but also yeah just just insulting a woman's uh physical appearance is just too it's too easy i, I don't i don't like doing that we respect women here okay we respect our women we're not little incels on the internet, like, Why won't this woman fuck me? Why is she fucking this little hobbit instead of me? Let me see your wife. Let me see your wife. I don't believe you have a wife. Let me see her. Let me see your wife. A bleach. Let me see your wife. I believe... I don't believe you. She's fake. Let me see. And, uh, when you're asking another grown man to bring his wife on camera for you, or you're just so concerned about another man's wife? Jesus Christ, man. You're a coomer. You're a coomer. <sighs> Beef turkey. Jules does everything. Yep, definitely. Uh, TJ Blackmore. Mike was gushing about Olivia Rodrigo. I was cringing so hard. Yeah. I don't know. It's weird. Mike is like... Mike is the woman of the relationship in a way. He's like the one... That, it, that's Howard, too. Again, another Howard Stern. The whole thing, uh, when Artie Lang was still there, used to make fun of Howard for watching shows like The Bachelor and Dancing with the Stars. And then people would be like, oh, maybe it's because he married Beth. He became more soft, and then he gets into it, and he's watching it for her as a compromise. You know, in a relationship, sometimes you do things or watch things you don't like to please the other person. But no... Howard was the one who loved Dancing with the Stars and all the The Bachelor. And, and Beth would watch it with him because he liked it. Similar thing with Mike. Mike watches all these really, really gay things. And then Jules just wants to sit on the couch smoking weed playing like Nintendo Switch or something. And then she watches it with him. 
They're very similar, guys. Very similar. Uh, Sue Party. The Nate show is the worst. Nate is a diva from hell. You know what, Sue Party? I want to bring something up, okay? It's the only time I'm going to do this on the show because I don't give a fuck. And most of you watching are not going to even care. So... I had a funny idea that I was, because here's what I like to do. I like to level up guys. I like to take guys and level them up to make them more challenging for you. Okay. So when somebody has an enemy, the best thing you can do is level up their enemy. And so then they have more of a problem and more of an obstacle trying to criticize this guy. And so this Nate show guy was a guy I was gonna I left a comment on his channel and the purpose of it was to be like I love you I love your show man it's really cool then I found out that after the fact mind you that he had reported Soup Party's channel okay when I heard that I said no 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 fuck that guy he's reporting channels fuck that guy never mind and I I dropped it I just said never mind in contrast this Moodles, this Moodles woman that you guys are all now jumping on ship with, thinking you're going to get views from that, it's not going to happen. None of those viewers are going to translate to this or whatever you're doing. You're going to say retarded, and then one of them are going to spurg out because they go, oh, I have a retarded son, and he spurs. Dad, I'm going to start, I'm going to protest you. That woman has now just been gloating because she took down a channel a whole channel not just reported it they're they're celebrating because they removed the channel of another woman who simply called one of her friends a hook nose this is why i mentioned that at the beginning of the show and they're like that's anti-semitic that's anti-semitic and you deserve to be deplatformed when hook nose couldn't apply to anybody anybody could have one example uh howard stern they used to have to clarify you're a hook nose Jew. Because hook nose can apply to anybody. Hook nose Jew. The term hook nose in itself is not Jewish. It could apply, but it's not anti Semitic in itself. But even so, simply her saying that is their excuse for taking this woman's whole channel down with years of content on it. Just gone. And then they're on YouTube like celebrating it and then trying to deny that they didn't do it. So again, you're supporting if you do get on board with this Moodles, a person who not only reports but takes down channels of people who offend her and hurt her feelings. Uh, no, 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 no. Don't get involved with that woman. Not even ironically, dude. Don't get involved. You should not support her simply for that. Okay. On Bleach, Nate Show reports. Please, please, please collab with Nate. Nothing will be funnier. No, I wouldn't collab with him. It would be funny to make Nate better if he hadn't reported your channel. Um, and then just make him like a super villain. A super villain. It, it's easy to do. I've done it before. Robin says, be proud. Ouch, mouse. I didn't see what that person said. Andy Cruz, so many incels around her. I know, I'm one. Ken, if you have a wife, I hope she's out of town, has no idea what you're up to. Nope, she's in the other room. She can hear me screaming right now. Robin! She supports what I'm doing, guys. Imagine that. Nine years she's put up with this horseshit. Salute to her. Salute to Robin. Robin's a down-ass bitch. Devin, I didn't watch any entertainment besides Red Bar for over a year. It's insane what he hides from his listeners regarding internet beef. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, I don't know. I have these weird moments where I, I'm criticizing Mike, but there are things I can say that he does well. I think if you are a guy running a business like this, it is a smart thing if you don't want to get into a conflict to simply just not mention someone and just subversively respond. So that's why he does this shit like putting a shredder tattoo on his neck, a fake one, to be like, I heard what you said, yeah, 
but I'm not going to respond to you, so I'm going to lean into what you said and become Ethan Klein even more. Right. So email me and you'll collect your price. Here's another Hassan Piker. Now, I think we've heard from Hassan oh enough. God. We'll be, we'll be doing it. It's Red Bar else, in the Wild the whole point. fucking show, basically. Let me see. Is there anything else in here? Otherwise, I'll move on to the next thing. So I got some based content for you. And as I said, a uh, guest will be joining us. So let me get into this next thing. Yeah, Red Bar saying how he wants to get rid of his Jew blood. By the way, I have some pure Catholic blood for you, Mike. I could maybe offer you some of that. Uh, he does talk about that. Anything. Yeah, you can be like, "Oh, I'm a Jew. I'm a Jew. They're doing this." They're exactly. It was a nice People place are after to be. Me because of yeah. my religion, my race. But yeah. now that's not even viable yeah. anymore. Well, I don't, you know, celebrate or support the kooky religion anyway, so I won't. What? Not be sad to see it go. And then I know this man's not celebrating Easter. Okay, that's all. There's people out there going, Mike doesn't it's not about just the religion you have jew blood <laughs> and that's what we hate it's not that you do a jew religion it's you were born into that religion with jew blood so whatever's coursing through your veins is disgusting so maybe you should convert. wait wait i have already looked through all this he wants uh, some christian blood for many years catholic blood and not that any Christians are even against me, but if they were, I'm covering all the bases. So I'm going to have a fully religious ceremony where I hire like a bishop of sorts to come in and do it. So it's more legit than any of the. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He wants uh, my blood, basically. So now he's looking for someone to give him blood. Some pure Christian Catholic blood, if anyone's interested. I can offer some, I can donate some, Mike. Uh, there's a lot. Yeah, last one. Here's Red Bar coping about his own bomb sound effect. Nice music here. And you know what? I think it might be time for a new Rise I agree. anthem soon. You know, here at Red Bar, we don't like to do anything for too long. We're always constantly, as soon as I kind of get bored of it, we want to I mean, update it and make it a little bit better. So been using it maybe for like time for decades, a new Rise. Right? you got to really spill this stuff out slowly for them, though, because maybe you change the Rise and some people don't even like the show anymore. I remember when I stopped doing the bomb sound effect, I changed it to something else. People were going nuts. I go, why would you like a sound effect every two seconds that sounds like this? You know, I don't even know. This really plagues me, this sound here. Because what is it for? When did I start doing this? And why has it become so, at the end of every sentence, I'm going... What? It's absurd. And how are people listening to this? Our show keeps growing. Nobody's complaining about this. A lot of people are complaining about it, Mike, that you use it way too much. Definitely. But now you've used it so much. Now it's just synonymous with your show. So I don't think there is any other sound you can do. I mean, you can uh, mix it up a bit. I know some of the jail sound and the yeah, 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 yeah I'm getting electrocuted. But yeah, after every fucking sentence, the explosion every fucking time, well, let's be honest, you're using it to m make the words that have no meaning have more impact. That's all it's for. I'm not using no soundboard, no music, but I'm handicapped like a retard. And you know what? Maybe it'll make me worse, but I'll get better at it and I will make sure I never need to rely on music beds or soundboards for people to listen to what I have to say. And if something I say isn't impactful, I'm not going to send explosions into your face to force you to think it is. That would drive me nuts. Drives me nuts. To to some show. This is the closest yeah. you get. This guy's yelling like Peter Griff. Oh, yeah, kind of less than a red man. What the... F that's like psycho exactly. stuff that I've done. I was doing this as a joke years ago because I think I heard, who does this? Some rap or Nicki Minaj was. You know what? And I made this connection. I was like, what is the bomb sound effect? And like, how does that shit start? We used to make fun of this a long ass time ago. You remember the Funk Flex radio show? Let me see if I could find a clip of that. That's what it was a parody. Like, people used to parody that shit. I used to make fun of it all the time. Funk Flex Bomb. S bomb Rant. 
Remember there was like that guy who got caught with a tranny in the car or something. Every time there was some beef or gossip in the hip hop world, which is what we're going to get into now that we get Mike off the screen and then our guest is going to join us. That's what he used to do. Let's see. Random. Uh, that. That's a funk flex. Let's see if I can find a segment with him. Yeah, that's what's up. That's what's up. birthday shout to Mr. C. C, what up? Mr. C. Big dog pit bull. Yeah. Had that Webster Hall on crank. Mr. C. So Mr. C was a guy who was caught with a tranny hooker in a car and then Fung Flex had to, um, I forget if Fung Flex was, at, uh, yeah, he was teamed up with the guy and then it was the Breakfast Club, I believe versus funk flex and then they were making fun of each other or mr c getting caught with a tranny and the same thing was always like <sighs> mr c he fucked a tranny but he's still my dog just because it has a cock don't mean he's a dog You know, that whole thing. But yeah, by the way, that's a good segue. Okay, Mike, thank you. Um, you're Ethan Klein. Figure it out. Okay? Uh, I want to get into something interesting. Okay, here, and then it's going to segue into our guest joining us. And I want to talk about a lot of this um, shit with P. Diddy, but not in the way that people have been discussing it before. I want to talk about it in a different way and actually maybe educate some people on how a lot of this started. Let me see. Hold on. Get out of here, Mike. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Just first off, there's some clips that are now funny to watch now in context, knowing about all the shit that's going on with P. Diddy uh, from him getting caught with all this footage of all these people who essentially it's going to turn to we're going to find out a lot of uh, maybe your favorite celebrity or musical artist has been caught having sex with men on camera that's pretty much what we're going to see this is an interesting tape i haven't seen many people play this let me see if i could pull this up um this is little wayne it's so fucking bizarre to see this and I bet you there's going to be a million of these, like, videos in context now. Hold on. Okay, here we go. I just had a question. And I'm just trying to tell all these young cats out that's trying to come up, you know, like, where do you think they got to go to? From your point of view, you know what I'm saying, what is the best advice you could give them? Because I'll be telling them, like, my best advice is they got to do it They're a whole new way, a different way, like, like, like they're from another planet. But coming from you, coming from the man of... Of, of men right now, tell them some. Tell them some good. I mean, first of all, you want to stay away from these diddy bop motherfuckers, you motherfuckers dancing all on the motherfucking stage and shit. They want your ass. You call them astronauts. So be afraid. Be very afraid. You really ain't built for the game. Uh, some. Something. Something. Something no, like that. Don't be trying to be famous. Like you gonna run into a motherfucker like that. I just had a question. I'm just trying to tell all these young cats I just trying to You guys think that's fake? Is it? I don't know. That seems crazy if it's fake. It seems very realistic. Come up, you know, like where do you think they got to go to from your point of view? You know what I'm saying? What is the best advice you could give them? Let's look. Them, Let's look at his like, mouth. My best advice is they got to do it They're a whole new way different way like, like like they from another planet but coming from you coming from the man of whoever wrote it's got bars though i mean he's got diddy if it's fake saying whoever it is gotta come from another planet you know what i mean and then uh stay away from these diddy boppers these okay, astronauts okay. as in like guys that are getting your ass men right now tell them something tell them something good i mean First of all, you want to stay away from these diddy bop motherfuckers. 
motherfucker dancing all on motherfuckers. Yeah, it is fake. It is fake. But no, it's real, okay? I'm they making it real. Shit. They want your ass. They no. want your ass. <laughs> Guys, don't ruin it. Come on. Um, I think it's real. Stay away from these ditty boppers. Uh, that should be going. Right? So, so you, you, you image yourself after a gay painter. The okay. Big homie want to look like a, a gay painter. What are we talking about here? We're talking about Basquiat. <laughs> I, don't know, like I love painter. this clip. I, I look and I go, oh, uh, that should be going. Right? So, so you, he wants to be a gay painter. You image yourself after a gay painter. <laughs> okay. Big homie want to look like a, a gay painter. What are we talking about here? We're talking about Basquiat. He wants to look like a gay painter. I, I look and I go, oh. I love Big Boy with his crow magnum skull. So, so you, you, you image the reason I bring this up is because it's not just P. Diddy, it's the whole hip-hop industry. And we're going to learn why. Hold on. Did you know that the head of Diddy's security, while he was sexually blackmailing the entire rap industry, was also the exact same guy that was the head of Michael Jackson's security? When he died, this is no joke. So this guy, I'm going to give a, a good history lesson on this. This is pretty crazy. Because people are just talking about, oh, uh, P. Diddy got caught and all this shit. This actually ties into something very crazy. And I want to make a disclaimer here, okay? Because people don't understand this stuff. When I'm... There's a difference between referring to just Jewish people in general and then Jewish people in power. And here's the comparison I'm going to make to you. So, okay, I'm Italian, right? If someone were to refer to someone who is an Italian mobster and criticizing the Italian mob, I wouldn't consider that an attack on me as an Italian person. There's this weird thing where you can't compartmentalize Jewish people where there absolutely is mobs of all races there is a jewish mob and this whole shit with the hip-hop culture starts way before this and it's crazy how it all connects to each other um meyer lansky one of the guys from the jewish mafia actual jewish mafia not a conspiracy theory he was the the accountant of the mob the, the jewish mob um, with, what was his name? Uh, Lucky Luciano. Yep. And they essentially invented sexual blackmail of people. And it started with, um, J. Edgar Hoover was like one of the first people. Let me see if I can pull up a video I just had before. Like this started in like the 1950s. Uh, he was being blackmailed, J. Edgar Hoover, by this Jewish mafia. They had a video of him basically blowing another dude. And back then, uh, it was very scary to be outed as a gay guy. And that's how it all started. Let me see. I have to find. Yeah, here we go. J. Edgar Hoover had allegedly been compromised by sexual blackmail long before he met Roy Cohn in 1952. Countless historians and scholars have speculated that Hoover and his longtime second-in-command Clyde Tolson were gay lovers. Both men were lifelong bachelors, they traveled everywhere together, and were the fuel of gossip pages across the United States. Most notably for our story, however, as early as 1946, Hoover was the target of blackmail. Several sources have claimed that both James Angleton, the future head of counterintelligence for the CIA, and Alan Dulles' prodigy, and one Meyer Lansky, the brains behind the National Crime Syndicate, a nationwide criminal underground network, had in their possession compromising pictures of FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover receiving oral pleasure from allegedly his second-in-command, Clyde Tolson. Okay, so now the connection here, right? This is what's so weird about it. Um, so he had this blackmail. They invented blackmail, basically, sexual blackmail specifically. Um, they would 
they were able to control the police, the politicians, the judges using the same technique of blackmail. But then J. Edgar Hoover started actually colluding with the mob and Meyer Lansky and like employing the same tactics. And he had a large collection of like pornographic material of all celebrities, not just for blackmail, but also for self gratification purposes. Uh, they, he used to have these parties. Okay. It would take, it was the Plaza hotels. They called the blue suite. And it was like cross dressing parties with orgies in the 1950s with like very young prostitutes, usually young boys. And this is how a lot of this shit started, where he would bring all of these politicians and celebrities over and then have pictures of them interacting, either doing gay stuff or with adults, other gay adults or young, young ones. Um, and so, like, they figured out that this sexual blackmail is like one of the most effective tactics and it's powerful. On And then they thought, what's a community that would be the most anti-gay what would be a community that's the most afraid of being called out as being gay and it's the black community okay so now you start to see where all this shit starts to piece together uh sexual blackmail as a tactic used by the jewish mafia it translated into both italian mafia and then black mafia then you see like black artists and then jewish people in this industry position not all jewish people i'm saying essentially a mob a jewish mob in control it's a group of people that's that's all i'm saying and then you got black people who are now being signed by these Jewish executives. Black people and Jewish people tend to then also coexist with Italian people, Italian mafia as well. All of it interconnected. Uh, P. Diddy, Jay-Z, many others. And then street crime brought into like the corporate and Hollywood world. And um, they were mentored by Jewish industry leaders on how to like operate and do the same thing. So that's what's really going on. You had the Jewish mafia coming up with the idea of sexual blackmail, then finding a community that is the most anti-gay, the black community and hip hop, signing these guys, pumping out more and more of the hard street culture shit of like, nah, bro, we don't fuck with you gay. We don't fuck with you. We're hard, we shoot guns, we do robberies and drive-bys, and they're pushing that image out even more to make the blackmail even more powerful. And so then you got P. Diddy, he started his record label at 24 years old. And who helped him do that? Clive Davis, who is a Jew. So I'm saying, and gay, okay? A gay, openly gay Jewish man, Clive Davis. And he was the mentor of P. Diddy and his producer and financier. And yeah, started Bad Boy Records, which takes on a whole new meaning now. Bad Boy Records. Uh, then you got Usher, Meek Mill, Justin Bieber, and oh boy, have all of them shown signs of being pretty gay. And then there's videos of them showing that they're pretty gay. Um, let me see. Let me pull up. Because someone mentioned it here before. Because now there's two videos that are really creepy in hindsight with Diddy and Justin Bieber. Here's, here's a second. Oh, man, you good? I'm good. How are you? All right, doing? young brother, everything's good? Everything's Selling great. out arenas and everything? Yeah. Starting to act different, huh? You, you, ain't, you ain't been calling me and hanging out the way we used to hang out. Well, I mean, you haven't, I mean, you try to... Imagine saying this to a little kid. My, you, know, business, you know, partners and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But it, you, you never really got, got my number, so... Right, okay. Yeah, number? Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm yeah. Gonna tell you my number. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's 555. Five, five. You ain't even party like that. He said that on the this show. It's called Drink Champs, where basically they bring on guys and then they get them super loaded and drunk, 
and <laughs> p diddy was on this drink champs podcast one time and he was like fabulous and them he's like why don't you party with me like that we haven't really party partied and he was really drunk and started to slip and freudian slips of come on man we haven't partied like that baby we haven't had a real party yet and they're like what the fuck and he's like come on daddy and like the full p diddy diddly diddler comes out so p diddy these jay-z types these guys are the protégés of these jewish mafia guys who taught this tactic of sexual blackmail down the line to where you know like jay-z he's he's got that song 444 jay-z's song 444 is all about talking about how he learned from jewish people the mentors were jewish executives yeah i'm giving you a million dollars a game for 9.99 uh, buy, I bought some artwork for two million. Two years later, that shit worth three million. Six years later, that worth eight million. I'm gonna give this shit to my children. I learned it from the Jews. You wanna know why Jewish people own all the property in America? Credit. So, it's like these guys are basically entering the thing and then it's like okay you want to be a mogul and a top hip-hop guy you have to become gay they make you gay and then so p diddy had to be a gay guy and then he had to turn everyone else gay including justin bieber usher meek mill all these guys i believe had sex with p diddy and then he took them all to these freak parties. What does this remind you of? Epstein Island, P. Diddy. Uh, I believe some of these parties took place on an island, Virgin Islands near where Epstein Island was. Same fucking shit, Little St. James. All the same thing. So the they like taught the whole tactic to black people in this industry. And then you wonder about Kanye. Why was Kanye saying all this shit and getting called crazy because... Uh, he was saying there is a gang, a Jewish gang in the industry, and it's not like all Jewish people, Jewish mafia. I believe the Jewish mafia does control this industry. That's just my opinion. Doesn't reflect on all Jewish people to me. Um, I believe there's just corrupt people, and yes, it can be a cultural thing. A black gang, like Dave Chappelle said. If it's black, it's a gang. If it's Italian, it's a mafia. If it's Jewish people, it's a coincidence and we don't talk about it. It was so right. It's so right. Because like you can still have a group of nefarious people who have cultural similarities. And that's why they've uh, banded together. I mean, this, this blackmail shit was started by a Jewish mafia. Good. How are you uh, young brother, everything's good. Everything's good. And now Justin Bieber has been beebed in his asshole twice. This poor kid. He had no shot. I mean, he's not going to defend himself from P. Diddy. Imagine this man. It's like if P. Diddy tried to rape me. Isn't yeah. everything starting to act different, huh? You, you, ain't, you ain't been calling me and hanging out the way we used to hang out. That's translation for, like, you used to come over to my house and let me fuck you in the ass. And now you're being a little bitch. <laughs> so the other creepy thing is that P. Diddy's head of security, okay, is the same head of security as Michael Jackson, okay? This all, all this shit is connecting. And then, like, uh, 10 years ago... Yeah, a lot of his notices, like, P. Diddy's a total fruit, right? And then there's gay guy. Okay, some names I could throw out, I think. Aesop Rocky, which is sad because Aesop Rocky, I think, does have some good music. He has creative music videos. Aesop Rocky. Those pictures of him in a hot tub with other men. Very questionable. Tyler, the creator, is now openly a gay guy. He hangs out with this Aesop Rocky. Uh, you got, um, who's the other fucking guy? The other Aesop guy. There's another Aesop who's uh, getting in the ace. A lot of undercover gay dudes in the, the hip-hop industry. Robin says, I like Aesop Rocky. Yeah. But he's gay. 
And I don't know if it's by choice. That's... <laughs> Like, this is what I'm saying. I think this is people being turned gay, made gay, for the fame and the fortune. They have to become gay. It's probably like, listen, Justin Bieber, I will make you the most famous guy in the world, but you have to have sex with P. Diddy. If you do that, you're, you're made for life. And then P. Diddy has the footage because he's got everything filmed. And now he has a video of him, him, sodomizing Justin Bieber that at any moment he could put out if he tries to buck you put out the tape the fuck tape ASAP Kratom yeah yo mama ASAP Ferg could, could it be any more obvious <laughs> what a Ferger Kif Dunnage the ace man I like gay people says Robin okay you, it's fine it's not that we're not Saying we don't like gay people. We're not saying we hate gay people. We're just saying they're being forced, these straight men, into gay sexual acts controlled by these men of the industry. Sex trafficking. Justin Bieber was sex trafficked. That's what I'm saying. ASAP Kratom sounds fair to be honest. Yeah. Levy, Biebs, you'll probably launch your career to new heights if you come out gay right now. Yep, 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 yep. Come on, guys. It, the, but that's crazy if you really think about it. So Michael Jackson's head of security and P. Diddy's head of security, the same fucking guy. And the weirdest thing is that it, it doesn't even make sense. When you look up the guy, it's in the court documents, the guy who is the head of security for P. Diddy who was responsible for helping P. Diddy cover up a murder, okay? P. Diddy and his son shot a man, and he was never charged for it. And then this guy, uh, who's in this other video that I can bring up, uh, this guy does a great coverage of all this stuff. I've, he's, I think he's on TikTok and in shorts now, and he's always covering all these like weird court cases and getting into the details. And this... Head of security helped Diddy cover up a murder, essentially. And this same guy was the head of security for Michael Jackson. And when you look into the guy, it makes no sense because the guy graduated as a real estate agent. What is his name? Um, Fahim Muhammad. Yeah, Fahim Muhammad was Diddy's head of security and also for Michael Jackson. And the guy, that's, what's weird is only a year out of college with only real estate experience he had real estate and marketing experience that was his like education a year out of college he was the head of security for michael jackson one of the biggest stars in the world and not only that this guy muhammad was the second person on scene when michael jackson was found dead other than the doctor so it was the doctor and then uh, this fucking guy muhammad showed up I don't know. That's kind of weird. Why is a guy with no experience being security guard, having real estate marketing, uh, and then a year later he's with Michael Jackson next to him when he's dying? And then he's also helping cover up a murder for P. Diddy. By the way, P. Diddy tried to blow up Kid Cudi's car. Did you see that? They, f Yeah. Kid Cudi, th this motherfucker allegedly put a car bomb in Kid Cudi's car to try and blow him up and kill him. And then uh, P. Diddy was nice enough to be like, just make sure his friends aren't there. Like, what a nice guy. Luckily, Kid Cudi, or maybe not luckily, maybe he should have blown up, but Kid Cudi wasn't in the car and then his car exploded in his driveway. And he was like, what the fuck? That's weird. Why did my car just blow up? Turns out P. Diddy was trying to murder Kid Cudi and blow his ass up mafia style are you getting the picture that's crazy man it all connects the dots all connect schizophrenia yep a jewish mob exists just like the italian mafia exists just like a black mafia exists okay doesn't mean all italians and all jewish people or black people are part of this conspiracy and that's why people wrote off Kanye because they 
They weren't understanding his schizophrenic thoughts of what he was trying to say, that there is a mafia in control, and he named specific people. He pulled out a fucking list. Okay? And I was saying everything Kanye West says is right, but the guy was trying to point something out, and he, who are we to say he's a guy in this world around these people? And he even called out, like, P. Diddy and Meek Mill for being fake because he knew that they're gay, but he didn't want to say anything and that they're doing all this freaky shit. He was afraid to say it. He was close. He came close to saying it. I mean, there's a million examples. We could be here all fucking night. I mean, there's a guy, Conway, the machine that I like. He's a rapper that I like. And then suddenly he, he was like underground 90s, bringing 90s style rap back with Derringer and Alchemist to all that whole universe. And then suddenly one day Kanye, uh, Conway was wearing a skirt, an Alexander McQueen skirt. And everyone was talking shit on him. He's like, dude, you're a hood guy and you're wearing a fucking skirt. And he was like, I just got the bag. You, you mad that I got the bag. And I'll do it again. I don't give a shit. I'll do it again. The bag. It's like, dude, you're that dumb. The bag is worth it. And his own friends are making fun of it. You've, we've heard like, it used to be hip hop conspiracy channels that would talk about this shit. Like, Nah, man, I got invited to a party and then you walk through the hallways and in each room there's... What the fuck? Is that Will Smith having sex with Justin Bieber? And people are like, this dude's wacky. And it would be like a viral conspiracy clip and it's like, oh wait, now it's just like true? Yes, he was. Yeah, yeah. Yo mama, he was wearing a skirt. His own friends were making fun of him for it. When you underground... A lot of eyes and ears are on you. And like I said, I'm right. And now look. So I know if I curate a project. This is West Side Gun. He's wearing a fucking purse. I'm telling you guys something happens. Drake might listen to it. Travis might listen to it. Tyler might listen to it. Hove might listen to it. Is that an Air Maze bag, Robin? Is that weird? I don't know. That's kind of weird. Is that? It kind of looks like one. Or is that like a... I don't know. What is Chanel or... What is that? This is a gangster. This is a gangster. So Nas might listen to it. Marshall might yeah. listen to it. So I do these albums so Hove can hear Rome. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So Nas can hear Rome. So Marshall can hear wrong. You feel me? And Drake because definitely heard. Been out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't know. Did you guys see? Um, I don't know. Let's let's look at this. Okay, so Drink Champs, Kanye was on there, and everything. Here's another funny thing. Look, we're just seeing like the the demasculation of these guys in hip hop. This was Ben Zeno crying about Eminem. Let me see if I should bring on the guest for this because he might enjoy watching this with me because I know he's uh he's into this stuff. So let me bring him on here. Give me a second, guys. I need to reach out to him really quickly.
Stop! Yes, I can hear you. Oh, fuck. Yo! Guys, let me know if you can hear him. This is Mark Harley. Very it is righteous. Me. Jesus have, has joined us for Easter. I have returned. <laughs> I've risen. He has risen again. How are you, Mark? How have you been? I'm doing good. It's finished a workout. So, you know, if you notice that I'm kind of fucking pumped or whatever, like, no biggie. Yeah. Have you been following, um, I'm sure you have, following this, like... P. Diddy and all this stuff. Yes, for quite some time now. Let me see if I can make it louder. There we go. I've been following it when it first came out and all the Cassie allegations came out. Um, you know, I actually happened to be doing, I was doing some voiceover work and some guy, like, randomly, like, I brought it up. I'm, I come into the studio to, to, like do some voiceover stuff and there was a bunch of other guys there and i brought it up like we were all taking turns like going in the booth and uh and doing some of these these voices for this project and one of the guys there happened to be from new york and he was telling me um like i was like oh have you guys been seeing this pd this is months ago and he was like had some like inside information on it because he was like i'm friends with like the sons and daughters of celebrities. So like I've been to Pete Diddy's house and like, or like I've been to some of these parties and it was really eye opening as far as like the detail, like, cause a lot of it's coming out now where he's like banging dudes. And like, you hear these corroborating stories where somebody, his security guard, like Ja Rule security or somebody was like, he came out of a hotel room, buck ass naked with Ja Rule. And like this guy, before all that came out, he was saying like the exact same thing. He's like, I've seen P Diddy like, stumble out of a fucking bathroom or like a like a bedroom like buck ass naked like all oiled up with like another dude and like look all discombobulated and then like his security like pushes him back in the room and just kind of validating a lot of these stories that we hear now that seem kind of outlandish about these like sex parties and stuff like that and that obviously just being the tip of the iceberg like if that's what you're into great but it's also like i also hate like false gay accusations because everyone's like you know it's the easy it's the easiest way to dismiss somebody i think in hollywood be like oh you know they're secretly gay it's like yeah 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 it goes in one ear and out the other but then when you hear it like 30 different times you know and and this guy was like to me very like the way he was describing the details you know and he's like one of these brooklyn dudes he's like yo dead ass man i see p diddy come out of the motherfucking bathroom and shit all oiled up like yo what's going on bro you know? <laughs> yeah, it uh, used to be it used to be because I used to watch a lot of these YouTube channels where they'd have guys who were not were kind of blackballed from the industry and they would do these podcasts. There's a lot of these guys and they were rappers and they would talk about all these weird parties that they would get invited to or a club. And then at the door, the story would be in order to get into the club, you had to let the guy squeeze your nuts. And if you were okay with it, they would let you in the door and be like, that's fucking ridiculous. This guy's making up. He's probably smoking too much weed. Yeah. But now anything is possible. And it, it's weird. We're in this weird time period where now everything that we thought was bullshit, stuff that maybe even Alex Jones might have said that seems so out of control and ridiculous is some, some of it is true, has become yeah. true. Yeah, and that's a great example. Of, like, I used to think Alex Jones was an absolute lunatic, and obviously, like his clips taken out of context. You know, like even though they're turning the freaking frogs gay, it's like, well, actually, even that sentence has some truth to it because, you know, like the chemicals that they yeah. put in water, like turn frogs like bisexual. You know, he's one of these guys that you're like, well, he's very easily dismissed because of his manner of speaking, but like apparently he predicted like pretty accurately like 9 11 like months beforehand he was like the world trade center is going to be attacked with that um, actually is very questionable so i remember that where he said that uh, he he proved that he covered it but then there was some disparity with the date of the actual tape and it's 
some say that they ended up finding out that no, that kind of aired after the fact. Okay. And then well, he you, kind of as far as manipulated like, it to seem like he predicted it. Yeah. I remember was, that. I know what you're talking about. Somebody was interviewing, I think and it, it might've been Tucker Carlson. So yeah, take that with a grain of salt, but they were like, you predicted this. And he was kind of like, yeah, I did, you know, but, um, all I'm saying is put him in that general category of like people who accuse like, you know, Hollywood celebrities and the ultra elite within those circles. And by elite, I mean like A-list celebrities, billionaires, the real power players of Hollywood, not your typical, like, you know, cause people get lumped in. It's like Hollywood's like this. It's like, well, Hollywood is so many different people, you know, down to like, blue collar fucking workers who do the lights and fuck, you know, the gaffers and the grips and all. It's like this, you know, you can't really put a label on any specific person in Hollywood. However, the, when you see stuff like this, it makes the accusations that people level against the Hollywood elite seem less crazy, you know, that there is like human yeah. trafficking or, um, and the more you find out about Sean, like, because I didn't know anything about these, like the the camps that he would take kids to, you know, like like that he that he knew Usher oh, since he was a there. little kid, and a thumbs up just came out of your mouth. What what was that? I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck I was that? No um, but it lends a lot of credibility when, and I do think people are legitimately scared to come out and talk against him because when I found out, and and uh, Kid Cudi and Cassie Ventura kind of independently verified this that he blew up kid cutty's car and it's like yeah. if he's capable of that i think he's capable of anything you oh, know that, that type of that type of shit is scary because people even think about like oh p diddy's kind of like a soft guy he's and you know now they're saying he's very feminine even a guy like drake too you think yeah. of these guys who are at the head the top of the industry and you go they're not real gangsters because the image in your head of a gangster is a guy who's doing drill rap and he's still on the street actually shooting people and then rapping about it. But no, that's exactly. what I'm saying. The, the mafia, yes. the mafias of every race, Jewish, black, Italian, Irish, whatever you want to say, uh, Asian, there's Asian mobs. But I think Drake surprise. If you, you'd be surprised. I would think you'd find out if there was something that came out about him, like with P Diddy, that he's done some pretty crazy shit. He's not the guy pulling the trigger. Like yeah, you could probably have someone show up at your door, get rid of you, and then nobody would know that it was him, and it would just be you're gone. Yeah, I and then never... he'll rap about it sublimity, like, yeah, that Triple X Tentacion was one of the guys they accused him of putting a hit out on him, and then he has some weird track where he plays into that whole rumor, like saying he went on live, he went on a live, and he was talking wild, and now he's gone. Very yeah, weird, yeah. no, it's, it's interesting, and and I and I guess when you see stuff like this, you just wouldn't put it past anybody. And um, when you look more into the accusations of like, how did Tupac die? And he, you know, Eminem has this line. He's like, the day he told MGK in that that diss song, the day you put out a hit's the day Diddy admits he put the hit out that got Pac killed. Ah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and he's like, they, he's like, they solved that and though. Like, it's not even. It's not even a conspiracy anymore they've gotten to the point where now they had the guy who got arrested not too long ago i forget his name but he confessed because he thought he had immunity this guy and he didn't he had a proffer session with yeah. um the dea or cis one of the fbi one of the three and they said he had immunity whereas Whatever he says in this proffer session can't be used against him in the court case that happened after. But beyond that, it could. And then this guy stupidly believed, oh, I have immunity for life. And this wasn't true. So he started going on podcasts like, um, yeah. you know, Adam 22. Who's the other guy who does those like quick podcast? The, the white guy. Uh, what's his name? It's on the top of my head. They call him culture vulture all the time. Hey, Vlad, right? G DJ Vlad, yes. He was going on DJ Vlad, and DJ Vlad was very smooth with it. He knew he was getting all this information out of this guy that this guy shouldn't be saying, and he just let him narc on himself. And he yeah. told a story that he was offered a million dollars, I believe, to put out, find the shooter, and hire them to kill Tupac. And then yeah. he never got paid, and so this is the smart thing. 
Diddy said, I will give you a million dollars. And you the, then you give it to the shooter and you split it with him. And then the guy who got the million from Diddy never gave the guy who actually shot at Tupac the money. So now there's no connection between the shooter, the guy who hired the shooter, and P. Diddy. So now there's yeah. these two levels of separation. Yeah. And the other guy, the only reason people found out is because the guy kept the money that who hired the shooter. Otherwise, yeah. P. Diddy would have been in jail for that too. And 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 again, just because you would put it past somebody like you always look at motive, you know, behind any conspiracy. You're like, well, what would the motive be? But when you start to find out all the shit that he was up to, including to me, one of the biggest motives that a guy could have maintaining this gangster image would be if you're involved in closeted homosexual activities, like you want to get rid of anybody who potentially could out you in that way. You know what I mean? To me, that's one of the strongest motives you could have. This if you have power and guys know that you're fucking dudes or they know too much, you know, um, this is a good I, question. That's an incredible motive in and of itself. And I'm not saying that is the motive. I'm just saying like, the more you learn about PDD, I wouldn't put anything past the guy, you know, this is a good question, Mark. Cause I mean, you live in LA, you're around that area. You yeah. don't have to, if you don't want to say anything. Have you ever been propositioned with any sort of weird scenario where you were told like, hey, you could get a network with this person or meet this person or get some sort of opportunity if you did A, B, or C or something weird where you felt a weird vibe and you're like, no. No, no I haven't personally really in that heart, but I have friends who have, um, you know, who have been directly propositioned and and you know, in weird ways where you, t you hear the story, you're just like, Oh God damn. Like this guy, like, you know, he, he has you over for some business meeting and he wants to go over a script. And the next thing you know, he's locking the door behind you and, you know, talking about like, Button you can secure this park if you, if you know, you let me suck your dick or something like that. Um, <laughs> but I've had weird relationships with people where like, maybe that's more implicit and, like and i'm not saying this is even like close to where it is but sometimes like i've been in situations where it's like why am i socializing with this like executive or person in power like i used to work on a tv show and there were people where i'm like like i just worked all day like and you want me to it's, you know we're working in new york and you want me to go to like some dinner in brooklyn at 11 p.m or whatever and i'm not so i'm not saying this is like analogous per se but like it's one example of how people will kind of use like leverage over you to be like this isn't in your best interest because i have to get up in the morning and actually go to work and like act tomorrow and you're and you want to use this like social activity time to like meet with me face to face for no apparent logical reason but i feel like i can't say no to it right so that's just one example of like nothing weird happened but like imagine it takes one step further then it's like oh do you want to come back to my house like and so i think hollywood does operate a lot on that of like everyone's so eager to network and be in the good graces of people like people are absolutely desperate to have the approval of casting directors because i know like i've felt indebted to casting directors before who are like female for example not even you know gay guys um uh uh you know and like I know I've like who, who, where I'm like, you want to see me too much, you know, like, like you'll want to meet up or do this thing. And I'm kind of like, but what's the point? Like I want, but I, but I'm eager to be like, I want to stay in your good graces and you've helped me out a lot, but like, you feel like you can't say no, you know? And I've, and I know I've fallen out of favor with people before because I'll have like one little slip up in there and their response to that has been, over the top in my opinion where it's like oh this one little time i didn't meet up or do something for you or you know comply with a favor and that logically shouldn't affect my relationship with you but you've been vindictive about it so i know those dynamics are very real especially with the gatekeepers you know producers casting directors people will of course use any power they have so i've seen it on such a small level where it's like you're just a casting director but if you have some sort of uh, feeling of vindictiveness towards me you're going to wield whatever way you can to like block me from an opportunity you know what i mean and um like 
because it works both ways. If I'm in the good graces of a casting director, they're going to like push me out more. But then like, then you say like, Oh, I didn't do this one thing that you asked me to do. And all of a sudden, like, I never hear from you again, you know? Um, so I'm just saying if that exists on such a small level, magnify that by a thousand. And of course people are going to use, you know, whatever mechanisms of power they have because of the intoxicating effects of power. And it's just not hard to believe at all that somebody like Diddy, you know, is the it more was, I uh, it was Keefe D, by the way. Thank you, Focus CDS. Keefe D was the guy who did the DJ Vlad interviews. Uh, I, I couldn't remember his name off the top of my head, who basically admitted that he was involved and Diddy was involved in the murder of Tupac. Some people say, uh, rate my body one to ten that I have small arms, small arms. Give me a one to ten, Mark. Come on, what, what could I work on? I can't really see, but All I think you're about. Oh yeah, I'm a big strong guy. Yeah, I'm you try to. On it. I'm working on it. People Calm always down go... there, chat. I know you. Very attracted to me. I know. Uh -huh. I have my body. Look at this. These are guns, my friend. Look at Mark. Those are guns. That's that's something you want to flex. Um, infected mushroom. Is this the view? What the fuck? Yes, it is. It's v the view for men. T.J. Blackmore. Oh, some people are saying. Uh, ask uh, Mark knows about this about uh, Brendan flipping over his trug. I yeah. mean, that was like poetic for his whole career. The fact that that happened, I think that's the peak of it. What what, like that, what comes after that? It's kind of analogous for everything. It's like he's given this brand new shiny thing, and he immediately destroys it with his own stupidity. <laughs> like whether it's his fucking, you know. UFC career or his comedy career, he just takes he takes golden opportunities and shiny new things and it just fucks them up out of sheer avoidable, you know, stu stupid decisions, right? Unforced errors, as you might say, because um, I feel like he just like yeah, he took this truck and I, the whole fucking Toontown endeavor. I was just watching some compilation. I forget what channel it's on. Um, That's true. He did make a video out of it. It got 168,000 views. Yeah. Where he's as the he's of, leaning into it. The rest of the chant, the views on that channel, it's just was. funny because like I, you know control, he thought. goes back. I saw this compilation day where he's like, "I'm a gearhead. I'm a gearhead. I'm a gearhead. I'm not a gearhead." Is he I, wearing I, this as a joke? This fucking neck brace here. Hold on. You can see this right. Uh, he probably is wearing it as a joke. Oh, yeah. Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got here. I wonder if that's so AI. What happened was the traction control, which I thought was off, was not. So what I'm trying to do. Oh, is so he actually is wearing the that. That's funny. Um, I, uh, how does it feel to look at him face to face? Kind of like you're talking to each other. <laughs> what would you say to him if you were face to face with him? Uh, you know. I would be normal to him. My thing, people always ask me, like, what would you say to him? I'd be like, he'd be too scared to look at me. I know for a fact, because he doesn't like really person oh, no, to person. It's Mog. What's that? It's Mog. Or Mudge. Mudge? Mudge trucks. Oh. <laughs> this um, is a joke, right? It can't be real. You think that's what he's actually wearing? It looks like it's made out of plastic. I would assume he did it for a gag because Chin actually had one of those, like, um, mm -hmm. for when he when he hurt his neck after Brendan put him in a chokehold or whatever. Um, what is but, is Toontown his channel or is it somebody else? Yes, it's his channel, and it's just another oh, spectacular failure of like his truck. I, I just think he gets YouTube in the sense of like. For example, you know, I don't know if you follow MMA news at all, but like, so I introduced Jesse on fire, this MMA commentator to, to Brendan, um, a while back and Jesse is great. He uploads videos every day. He covers MMA and he gets like, I looked at like their social blades. They have comparable followers, but I've been following Jesse since he had like 5,000 views and now he gets like twice the views per month as the entire, you know, Thick Boy channel, let's say Thick Boy has like maybe 20,000 more followers, but like I know Jesse's at least got 150K followers. Um, but he's just like, he, he uploads from his house. He does his own thumbnails. He does his own editing. He's like a one-man shop. And 
um, he's outperforming Brendan. And I'm like, it's whatever. I had your studio, but it's just funny because, like, in Brendan's mind, he, like, needs to have, like, a staff and, like, like have all the accoutrement of, like, a regular show to, like, validate, like, him feeling better than, like, a normal YouTuber. But it's like, bro, you're a YouTuber, but you just have, like, a staff of fucking 10 people, like, doing all the shit that you're unwilling to do. Like, how hard would it be to learn Photoshop or learn how to edit, you know, a simple fucking podcast? Um, instead of paying someone, you know, six figures a fucking year, it's all this shit that like, you know, like you're doing, like, you know how to do everything in your fucking show. You know, you're not sitting there paying a staff a show. Yep. Yeah. All As a lot of people man. do, you know what I mean? And maybe if you're really busy, you hire an editor or something like that. But it's just another funny thing is again, he's, he's modding out cars for a show. And outside of the crash video, like they were getting like a few thousand views a video, you know what I mean? It's just completely ass backwards. Chip Chips regardless says Mark rigged the car to flip, and then other uh, focus said Mark was in the sand and flipped it. He thought his wife was in it. <laughs> <laughs> Anything to say about that? Were you involved? Did you rig his car like Kid Cuddy's car? Yeah, I actually, I, his car? <laughs> uh, I actually somebody made a meme out of that. I credited them. I forget what the name is, but somebody on Reddit made a. Like, like the moment he's like flipping over, they put me like outside the car window. <laughs> Did they ever put the, this would be funny, the, the footage of you, you know, with the car. Yeah, I'm sure they have with done that. It. That's a perfect match. This was, yeah, this was actually different. They took a different, they took a picture of me like flexing and uh, matched it up. But it looks, it looks, it's on my timeline. It's like not too far back if you want to look it up. Uh, but, and then I, and then I put my own song from the thick boy album uh as the uh as the song over the picture but you know i just think it's fucking hilarious because again he can't seemingly do anything right and um you know i don't know i don't know how you fuck that up like you, you get a new fucking car you can't like isn't I, i've never done a donut but like isn't that kind of simple to do i don't know like it doesn't seem like the most technically difficult you know, thing you could do in a fucking car, but of course he. But Super Rodriguez says, "Did you ever get invited to a movie theater with Burt Kreischer?" No. Maybe insinuating I, that I, would be a weird scenario. Right. You would try to take a shirt yeah. off and do something with you. Okay. Um, I guess that's no, a joke. That was Burt. Burt. Burt was super nice. He said he would come on my podcast. He was like, "Oh yeah, I was watching your podcast the other day. I thought that was really cool." Burt, to, to me, I know Burt gets a lot of shit, but. He was very nice, and he came through Thick Boy to, like, do um, Fight Companions with Brendan when, you know, he doesn't need to do that. I think he has a much bigger following and platform than Brendan, and I think he's oh, been yeah. nice to Brendan. So mm -hmm. I don't have anything negative to say about Yo about Mama, Bur I'm not asking that question. That's fucked up. That's crazy. Uh, let me see. Oh, this is kind of interesting. People don't know, a lot of people don't know this, some do, I'm sure, but like, a lot of people don't know that Tupac was not a gangster at all. He grew up educated, he was a theater kid, and he was a very good actor. He wanted to be essentially an actor, and he was able to mold himself into this gangster, and then he played the part so well that it almost became him. You know, you'd see yeah. footage of Tupac spitting at people at the car, like, fuck you, and then... Suddenly, he's playing this acting role where he's like super, uh, you know, artist, actor kind of guy. And I think that's essentially what he did. He knew how to play the role of a gangster, and that's why he basically ended up getting killed because he was playing the role too much and he wasn't really about that life. Yeah. He was very good and, at playing it and rapping. I think he's an incredible actor, too. Like, I was always like, for, for his age, yeah, you know, he's the back of this dude. Is like, 24 25 like he was not only rapping i think he was incredible at rapping but like he was a legit actor you know in my opinion and just had a tremendous amount of charisma but that's that's an interesting way to look at it that like you brought really up was. um you were did you ever see you know how the benzino and eminem were going back and forth hell yeah did you see the the interview with benzino on drink champs so crazy. yes Oh my God! Yeah, because he like breaks down, doesn't he? Yeah, he has a whole mental breakdown. It, what's funny is that this like Benzino versus Eminem thing has been going on for what twenty years now, 
And no matter yeah. where Benzino goes, these like Eminem stands basically show up and harass him. Yeah. This well, it's dude, funny because oh. like I mean, but he did legit it. Like he, so he owned up to the fact that let me tell you his he fact. was trying to because like Eminem's beef with him was that when he was uh it was it the source that benzino headed up yeah yeah the source magazine like so but he admitted to kind of like blackballing him and, and undervaluing he was like you know there's some line he has like five mics at the source they hold my fucking breath because he wanted you know eminem of course always craved that like you know dis of course he's outselling everybody but he also wanted that street credibility you know, and the respect of his peers and, and these hip hop publications. So it was really important to him that he be recognized. And I think it really obviously irked him. But in fairness, Benzino at some point admitted that he was like, yeah, we, we I didn't like the fact that a white, like I wasn't going to give him the rating he really deserved. You know what I mean? Even on these, what most people would consider to be classic albums. So I think there was fairness to it, but like, yeah. It's just such a rough spot. It's almost like, like, well, you know, when 50 Cent goes at you, like, these days, like, online. Like, I think 50 Cent's, like, the best online troll. Like, and oh, he's yeah, just yeah. relentless. Oh, with Diddy. You know? He's been going crazy with Diddy. Right. Trolling Diddy. It's just, like, you can't respond to him because anything you fucking say, like, he's going to go even harder at you. You know? You're just fucked. Um, and the same thing with Eminem, where it's, like, once Eminem starts going at you, you can't, you, you know... You can't really respond because he's just going to keep fucking going. Um, there, you know, there is a weird thing with this whole Benzino thing where. So I want to show some people the video because it's so funny. They might not have seen it. But also, Benzino does have some validity to some things that he said because remember, we heard the whole thing about Eminem had a tape where he was being disrespectful to black people, saying the N word and all that stuff. But what ended yes. up happening was there was a court case where they went to court over this and then Eminem's lawyers were able to convince everybody that uh, he was 16. He was 16 when he uh, recorded this. But then when they went in the court, they had to admit, no, he was actually 21 when he made this tape. But the he, Eminem had so much money and power and influence at that time that he was able to get the lawyers to basically make it so Benzino could only play, I believe, 30 seconds of this tape. And he had to release it as a bonus track on an album that used to come in the Source magazine. And so it was part of the magazine in the like folds of the cover. But the actual tape, he said is like 20 minutes long multiple tracks and it's like eminem calling black people porch monkeys and all this crazy racist stuff and it's like to the level where we didn't hear even the worst of it so eminem's career started out basically hating black similar to kid rock i don't know if you guys know that kid rock so 16 and 21 are a big difference so listen to this clip because it's funny because Benzino starts out by going fuck Eminem and trying to make it a super controversial interview but then as he gets more liquored up and these guys are letting him continuously drink he starts to break down and cry and then he's like I want to hug and kiss Eminem fans bro his fans <laughs> like him because he's white they yeah I know us. like Let me I, try would, to make I would almost like not agree with I, I, I fucking shows Eminem. like Rap out. seeing this, what other uh, this is a quick um let me play a little bit of this. This bitch. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How about that? <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. How about that? How, about, how, how come he ain't answer me? How come he ain't answer me? I beat the shit out of him with these. Eminem or Machine Gun Kelly? Eminem, bro. He went to um, what is it? A mom spaghetti in Detroit. Eminem has this restaurant, Mom Spaghetti, where he now serves spaghetti. And in Benzino's diss track, he showed up to Mom Spaghetti, ordered it. And it was like, this shit sucks. And then like throws it on the street at the beginning of the diss track. So, so it's which, really bad. M &M, so which bro? one? Neither, both of them, bro. I agree. Cassidy will kill Eminem in a battle rap, bro. Why do y'all give do? Eminem you know, so much? Why, why, why do y'all like Eminem because he's white? Is that nah, it? Be, 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 what do you mean? Nah, like, what? You can't. It's impossible. <laughs> We don't listen to that in the hood, bro. A few moments later. I don't got nothing against Eminem. I got nothing against Eminem. Eminem can rap. But I care about us more. 
I don't want to go through. I don't want to talk about it no more. I don't want to, for 22 years. Every time I do an interview, they ask me about Eminem. The f you want me to do? Come on, man. Come on, man. My daughter came into the industry figuring that hey, I gotta be cool with Eminem because everybody's against my dad. You think this shit is cool? No, oh, man. Ooh. We're failing as a people. I don't hate Eminem. I don't know him to hate him. I don't hate white people. I'm tired of this shit, man. It's just too much. I don't want to be the bad guy. I got an eight-year-old son that I dropped off at school this morning. Come on, man. Come on, man. I'm all right. I don't want my DMs filled with... I've had nine pages knocked down a million. And white people think... I love, I love all people. Come on, man. All me and Eminem got to do is sit down and talk with each other. Let's sit down and talk. Let's battle. Let's do whatever. But let's at least face to face meet each other. If, you, if that was to happen, would you give him a five? Fuck it, man. I'd hug him. So I was just scrolling on Twitter and him. I came across this video and I, I found it both interesting and kind of sad if I'm being. Fuck it. But let's at least face to face meet each other. This dude knows he's like. Because they ask him, there is truth to this, though. I agree in a sentiment of it. Like, yeah, a lot of Eminem's success came from the fact that he was a white guy. And yes, he he is lyrically in the double entendres. Like, back then, Eminem was more, I would say, catered to the gangster image and everything. And maybe, like, more black people would have listened to his music back then. But now he's become kind of like a student of rap where he's just trying to learn how to do the acrobats and do... And I like listening to it because I like... I don't know. It's not like a song I listen to and go, this is my theme song. But I like listening and like deciphering the lyrics. And every time you hear it, you then you go back to Eminem tracks from like 10 years ago and you rehear it and you go, holy shit, that's what he meant that whole time? Even that yeah. mainstream music? What is it? Uh, um, Bumble rap? <laughs> uh, the... I'm not afraid. Uh, uh -huh. Fuck your feelings. Fuck your feelings. Instead of getting crowned, you're getting capped. I probably heard that a million times and never knew what he was talking about at the time. And it's like feelings, yeah. fillings in your teeth. Instead of getting yeah. crowned, you're getting capped. Crown tooth, cap. Like he does all this weird shit that's like so complex that most people are not going to see it. And I think. It just doesn't appeal to guys in the hood. They want to go rob a house. They're not going to listen to Eminem. And that's the point he's kind of making that it's not Correct. good music. But right. He does no, I agree to that I'm, all of these creators and all the old I'm all OGs about the double entendres and the wordplay. And I, I'm, I'd always argue that Eminem is the best rapper based on like, what are we looking at? Pick eight different categories of like, are we talking about his cadence, his wordplay, the double entendres, the metaphors, the punchlines? Like you can... You know, rap's a little bit easier to objectively look at outside of like whether or not you like the sound of his voice. You know, because like Tupac yeah, to me has one of the best rapping voices of all time. You can argue that you don't like the sound of Eminem, but you can't argue against what you're saying, which is all his lyrics are so dense with, um, you know, these poetic devices that I think he does these things literally better than anybody else, including nowadays like the double and triple time rapping that's like even if you're just trying to memorize his verse and spit it back it's incredibly difficult so it's like you're watching this guy who's just like you know hitting these quadruple axles but also has other elements of of style and flair and it, you know it doesn't have to be for anyone like it, you know i don't give a fuck how popular any of his music is i listen to it because i go what's the next level he's gonna push it to you know with punchlines, with double entendres, with clever wordplay that, as you're saying, you might not get until years later, you know, but I always re-listen to his stuff and I always go back and try to, you know, because sometimes it just happens too fucking, he's rapping too fast for you to hear it on the first time. But, you know, he also, I also like his really slow music too, you know, where you can hear everything he says. Um, he tried, like, he uh, tried to do that with this, um, this Benzino disc track that he did. He did a, is called Doomsday 2. 
He did yeah. a remix of Role Model. Um, yeah. And it was con- it was a little bit better because he's doing a slower flow yeah. to it, but also he can't help himself at the end. He does that. I think what a lot of people hate is when he does that choppy flow, like, I'm in it with Cole Bennett, and I've been at it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cole Bennett. Yeah, and I think, you know, to put myself in his head, I'd imagine that he's just trying to keep it fresh and, like, do something different so that he can, you know, like, or almost, like, imitate other people's styles and say, look, I can rap like this, I can rap like that, I I can, you know, but is that my favorite kind of flow that it has? Certainly not. Get Mark to freestyle? <laughs> Let me hear a little bit. Let me see if I can do a, what is it called, a Black Reacts and see if I can get away with it. I want to do a test here to see. Because I noticed so many of these YouTubers do reaction videos and music. I'm like, I can't even play a song without getting claimed for it. So I'm curious if I like go through this and pause it, what will happen? I think that's what bothers people about Eminem when he does stuff like that. What is the opposite of Benzino? You mustn't laugh. A giraffe. Go with his neck, how the fuck is that? Yeah. So this flow is much better than what he usually does. I, I think... If he went more into this lane, he could probably capture more people. How can I go? There's one thing he's great is his flow and the way he connects his words to the beat is like perf. It's near perfection. That's it's like listening to a computer rap basically. But this is better than yeah. the super acrobatical, super lyrical thing. But he kind of gets into it at the end. But it's just weird. Imagine no. being a kid today listening to this and going. He's dissing Benzino, and then I think he references Sandra Bullock, like, what? in 2024. But this gonna do it. Holy shit, man! Eminem is back. God damn! Oh god, I gotta spin around for this. Shit. And I've been it. The level Jake commentary. Oh, been it. It's aftermath. This. Not right. Some weird going on with Eminem's face, where I think he might be getting like bo a lot of Botox and stuff. It just looks very unnatural. It's weird to me. Uh, I don't know, but I agree with Benzino on a lot of these points where, yeah, a lot of these guys are not going to listen to this music. You got to just love it for the art of the lyricism of it. Other than that. My high horse and I'm fly. It's high horse and I'm fly because a high horse flies. You gotta have like a third grade education to understand this. Eminem. He's apparently making a new album, but I don't know. Yeah, songs trash. Yeah, it's weird. I don't know. Eminem was, was totally different. Like, you think this, the song that this is based off of is the original, the role model, the original role model? That's a good fucking song. You guys remember that? That's a, That's not bad. I'd say if he rapped more like this, might be. But I don't know, man. I I would I would like to get back into more like rock music and stuff, but I don't know. The last guy that Eminem dissed was uh, MGK, and now MGK is like turned into a full-on emo kid. Have you seen this? His like new album is. MGK and Trippy Red Sad Boy. Like, that's his new. It's like. I'm really sad and I'm gonna kill myself with a gun. I'm really sad and I'm gonna kill myself just for fun. I guess I lost. Like, Blink 182 mixed with. And then Trippy Red's, uh, like his screams. My life again. It's just one of those nights again. No one wants their life to end. Drowning out in a life of sin. I guess I lost my life again. It's just one of those nights again. No one wants their life to end. Drowning out in a life of sin. They're totally grifting this whole like emo thing. I don't know, but I'm not. Uh, am I mad at it? I'm not mad at it in the sense of like people bringing back punk rock or this is this is total emo music. 
I'm not mad at punk rock coming back, rock music coming back. I just haven't heard anything like extremely good to to enjoy it. Uh, I don't know. People say turn up your mic, you're very low. My mic is so fucking loud. Uh, maybe something changed. One second. Input line. Yeah, lowered. I don't know why that happened. Hello, 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 hello. How long has it been like that? Tell me earlier. I don't know if something changed where it just changes. Computers are fucking annoying, man. They just change shit on their own. I never touch that. It just fucking did it on its own. Has it been like that the whole show? It wouldn't be the first thing that fucked up. Yeah, I know. Infected mushroom. But it's so hard to... Like, pay attention to all of this shit and then keep up with the chat room. It started when Hella Mark came on. Okay, it's probably something to do with the stream yards. By the way, Hella Mark, uh, I think he crashed his car. He flipped his truck and he's gone. Uh, but Mark, thank you for coming on. I was going to end here soon anyway, so I appreciate it. That was cool to have you jump on there. Get your opinion on stuff. So, thank you. Don't, don't worry about getting dropped off there um let me just read some of your chats here and again happy easter to everybody what is it an hour oh it's 10 42 not bad two and a half hours this is this is like perfect timing to just two and a half three hours and then go um thank god though it only started when mark came on if it was the whole show it was gonna be like <laughs> That sucks, man. Um, and there's no rewind on because in case something happens, I can fix it. Especially when I have... My plan is to eventually have an open panel here. So where you guys in the chat room that are super angry or enjoying the show can like jump on and join in. Then we just have like mayhem. Imagine all these people in the chat room that are angry screaming at me directly. That would be awesome. Come on. That's what I want. That's what I used that's what I'm used to that people would have to call in or you were ignored. Like I'm not saying I love everybody in the chat. It's so hard to keep up with it while you're trying to do the show and control everything. I have no producer. Nobody's helping me with this. It's just me. And back in the day, you had to call a phone number. You could block your number if you wanted, but you had to call in and then be accepted. So I would see on the screen, the calls coming in, then I can go, I'll accept this one, right? And then the person would have to call and I would talk to them on the phone. And that was the only way. The chat was very, very, very rarely acknowledged. But for now, I'm doing it just because it's the only way to communicate with you guys. But I want to set it up. I want like a phone, maybe a Google voice number that gets set up like an actual physical phone that I pick up just because it's funnier. But with the headphones, it might be, it might be hard. I'm going to have to just create like a virtual phone on here that you can call. Um, Bleach says if Eminem did have MTV in 1999, he'd be a nobody today. Yeah, that was part of like Benzino's point is that he was given all this access that nobody had because he was a white guy rapping. And yeah, there's so many white rappers that are better than Eminem. And it's not from a perspective of like, this guy is better lyrically uh, or can do better entendres and mixing the words and metaphors, just as far as like sounding good on a record. Amanda Meatfoot, hello losses. Hi, Amanda Meatfoot. Don't know if I've seen you in here before, but thank you for joining us. Jay Dummies in here. AJ Dummy. Chips regardless. Thanks for contributing, commentator. You're welcome. That's what I'm here for. David Walsh. Maybe Jewel should sing this. Red Bar's gay. Mike made a whole album LARPing as Eminem. That is true. He did do that. Ah, do a drugs with me. And I'm a guy in a morgue and my mind is morbid. Some people are drugs when they were young, yeah. Some people are less I don't know. He, he was even worse than Eminem somehow. Somehow he managed to sound worse than Eminem. 
and I just can't keep living this way. Like, this is, wait, let me see. One million views. Like, the kids today are listening to this now. This is like suicidal music. Constipated, like he's taking a shit, and like he has a giant hemorrhoid. Yeah, yeah. Blue eyes. I record. Damn, that was fire, bro. God damn. Order two tonight. One is for all those I love. This one's for the suicide. Everything is blue inside. Everyone ain't you and I. People won't say how they feel about you until you die. God damn, man. That's like he's saying. They ain't gonna care about you until you die. Then once you die, then everybody loves you and misses you. That's a deep. Everything cinematic. Protagonist catches a bad habit. By the end, he's a damn addict. Leave him guess and make a sequel. Let everyone say that it wasn't as good as the first. And it's kind of crazy because actually MGK, I would argue, is better than Eminem. The old MGK. I remember when MGK first came out. Some of his initial albums. Definitely better than Eminem because he had more of a... He, he sounded better on the music. And I mean, he's there's flow there, but it, the lyrics aren't like super mathematical equations. Habit. By the end, he's a damn addict. Leave him guess and make a sequel. Let everyone say that it wasn't as good as the first, and they lost a damn magic. Y'all being pragmatic. Bitch, I'm illmatic. I'm definitely not illmatic, man. Fuck out of here with that. Rich and still savage. I'm rich and I'm unhappy. I wish I was back in the days when I had a shitty shirt with my hat backwards. Now I'm alone in a vamp castle. I'm telling oh, myself it's the last there. capsule, but why would I? Yeah, I feel that. Who's that guy? Uh, he's like the one of the most famous ones. Um. No life shack. God damn. Yeah, man. Wish I could go back to those days where I just had my cat backwards. I'm rich and still savage. I'm rich and I'm unhappy. I wish I was back in the days when I had a shitty shirt with my hat backwards. Now I'm alone in a vamp castle. I'm telling myself it's the last capsule. But why would I even want to be alive to see it with someone at Art Basel? So I, I guess I lost my life again. It's just one of those nights again. No one wants their life to end Drowning out in a life of sin I guess I lost my life again It's just one of those nights again Yeah, I don't know It's just weird because after this whole rap devil rap beef thing He just completely switched up his whole career And now he's an emo guy And he's wearing like pink and like carrying purses around i don't know i think eminem is another one of these guys who has this like magical power that you wouldn't expect like drake uh, but eminem's like a total recluse he doesn't come out of his house ever he never ever comes out of his house and he basically probably has power behind the scenes because mgk the whole reason this whole shit started is he was like blackballed from being on shade 45 and then he did the like freestyle where he took shots at Eminem and that's how the whole back and forth started. But then it also dates back to a tweet that MGK made about M Eminem's daughter being hot when she was underage. He's like, yeah, Haley, Haley's really hot, man. She's uh, she was 17 and he was like in his mid twenties at the time, I think. And then uh, Eminem let it slide, but then he started doing press tours talking about it. And then it just escalated from there. But I'd say Rap Devil was better than Kill Shot, honestly. As far as replay value and what was said in it, I don't know. Kill Shot was kind of really corny, in my opinion. He was like, uh, If I was three foot eleven, you would still look up to me and suck a dick for the record. Good lines in there, it's just all the delivery of it. Is a Stevie Knight, he's another one. Stevie Knight, how are these guys making money off of this? I can't even play a song for two seconds 
These guys have careers just reacting. Crazy. This guy, yeah, no life shack. Like, look at the way he oh, does whoa, it. Whoa, 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 pause. Pause. You just go past that. Like, this nigga just say niggas trying to kill him. Because what he's saying. Man, that's what I'm, that's what I'm talking about, man. It's, it's like Benzino, it's like, bro, it's like, bro can't get over Eminem, bro. Thank you, No Life Shack. Thank you for that commentary. Okay. Shut the shit off. <laughs> yeah, I know, man. Oh, I'm at my wits end with all this shit. I got most of it out of the way. I'm just, uh, I thought it was cool to really connect the dots there because a lot of people just talk about the P. Diddy thing and they want to talk about what they found. Uh, there's all this weird shit that was found. But it's more interesting to me to go back to really the origins of this whole thing and how it all connects and that it's not conspiracy anymore. And it gives you a better perspective on how this shit started. And we have to start separating people as races and also there is mafias. That was my point. And I think that's where Kanye made a mistake. He didn't refer to it in the right way. He tried to paint it as a cultural thing in general. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Now we got, uh, oh, everyone's focused. Uh, Kendrick dropped a diss to Drake and J. Cole. The big three. There ain't no big three. There's just big me. Nigga, bum. Use a bum, Drake. You have to wait for J. Cole to, to respond. And everyone's like, J. Cole's on his bicycle. He's speeding to the studio. J. Cole, by a multi-millionaire, he's probably worth $100 million and he still rides a bike. That's pretty cool. I fuck with that. I fucks with that on the fentanyl music. Yeah, yeah, that it's just this whole culture now of like uh, the juice worlds and everything. Pop, pop, Molly and Ling, kill yourself and overdose. Heart on my sleeve. I love that Drake AI song, but now it's gone from Spotify. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hard on my sleeve. AI, by the way, I don't like it. I don't like it. I think AI should be used as a tool to make creating things easier. But if you're using it in replacement for creativity, I don't like it. I don't like these people making fully AI songs. I don't like these people that doing bits that are fully AI. I don't like people that are just making a bit like cloning a voice. Uh, I mean, anyone can do it. You can go to a website and pay $3 and then you could be cloning someone's voice with pretty much 30 seconds of audio of them speaking. It's already been done to me and it's been done to multiple people. Uh, I don't know. I hate it. I hate it. You guys are thinking it's fun now. Wait until every single job is taken over by AI. Whether you're a clipper or whether you're a time stamper. By the way, on Bleached, I had a uh, cameo on an Unbleached show. Unbleached came back. And I was happy because I always wanted Unbleached to stream again. It's been a while since he has. And it was funny. He, he We just went live and did a show for fun. And I showed him a couple of this AI stuff. And then he found another site that just makes shorts for you. You just give it your YouTube video and it just creates shorts with the subtitles and everything already on it. Uh, let me see one of, one of the funnier ones was. It like tight. Does it title for you too? Unbleached. It's creating these titles. You can tell it's kind of. Let's see. Right, but that did that did that. rub me the wrong way because it kind of came across condescending. Like, oh, this was me in focus arguing, and then 
on Bleach's whole setup was like echoing and then it sounded like me and focus were arguing on like the breakfast club or like a uh, funk flex radio program because it was just echoing the whole time my parents, 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 i didn't mean that, that it, it came off in the way that triggered you that's my bad if that's the case you know what i mean all right all right cool 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 but can we also what? be honest what? that what what just just because you do a character you're still kind of indulging in the gossip, no? A little bit. Yes, 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 and I ain't knocking if that's what you do, like, right? Everyone does whatever they do on the internet. Right. But that did that did that. rub me the wrong way because it kind of came across condescending, like, nah, we there's no man in the was, house, I'm the greatest parent. And it's that I won't make fun of their, their physical appearance. Like, I'll make fun of them. But to make fun of their physical appearance, I feel it's too far, it's too low hanging fruit with a woman. Would you make fun of my noodles? But Menudo Moodles, I did. I think I kind of did. I said she had a Cro Magnum skull, I think. <laughs> but I felt bad even saying that. But personally, I will shit on her. It's that I won't make fun of their physical appearance. Like, I'll make fun of them. But to make fun of their physical appearance, I feel it's too far and it's too low hanging fruit with a woman. Would you make fun of Man Moodles? But Menudo Moodles, I did. I think I kind of did. I said she had a Cro Magnum skull. There you go. Go, go, guys. Go subscribe to Unbleach at Unbleach U N B E L U N B L E A C H D. So youtube.com slash at Unbleach. And uh, go give them some likes and subscriptions. And hots and all that stuff. I want to find one of the other ones. Let me see. Uh, what was it? Did you post it as a video? Wait. Hello, Mark Harley. Did you just post this? Wait, what? A fucking douchebag influencers. Like he's he's pretty much like a fucking regular dude. I think the it was the opportunity because at that time they don't understand. Like they think that I was like, I'm going to get back into streaming. Let me get Mark Harley and go after Jimmer Nam. By the way, Mark, I hope you receive the, the $500 check. It's in the mail. You should receive it soon for tonight's appearance. Thank you, Mark. Um, he was gracious enough to lower his rate for me, Mark Harley. You have to pay Mark Harley to get him on your show, uh, apparently. Oh, here we go. You want people to see you. That's why you want my attention. That's why you're on Instagram posting content, making edits. That's why you're making thumbnails with my face in it. Who, who are you fucking kidding? You're doing this for fun. No, you want more views. That's why you bought 6,000 subs to present yourself as the guy with subs. No, he, he bought a channel. For Don't know who that is about. But, yeah. Give Unbleached a like, subscription here. There you go. Unbleached channel right here. Look, he's at 1.22k. Let's get him up to 1.5, guys. Unbleached. Taking the world by storm. Comedy Shaman is returning. He's going to take the world by storm. Freshly off of Kratom. He is going to dominate. Let me see if I can find... Is this one right but that did that did that. rub no, me i want i want the one with the where's the <laughs> how to overcome challenges i'm probably gonna quit life yeah this one all, <laughs> all my recent achievements have gone to waste I just love this whole copium of when people don't have fucking viewers. They say that it's just for fun. Yeah. Well, we're just having fun here. Yeah, I don't. This is a ho this is a hobby. No, hipstar. We know this means a lot to you. You do not put that much fucking work and preparation and editing and all this shit. Thirty TVs around you for fucking fun, dude. That ain't it. On Bleach, which is the one that uh, we talk about the bridge. Talking about bridge, bridge, the bridge fallen. 
Oh yeah. Did you hear about the the bridge collapsed in Baltimore? <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't believe what they found. They found a uh, a blow up doll of Tupac and Biggie, and he was <laughs> fucking it. When Diddy's plane crashed, he had a kid's cock in his mouth. <laughs> did Diddy leave the country though? No, no, that was all. So or did they surprisingly, Diddy Diddy did not have any restrictions on travel, and his lawyer made a statement saying that there is no, he's not being detained or yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah. So that's that that's the, funny. The they basically, uh, P Diddy was able to fully travel. Like people were convinced that Diddy was like detained or something but no the, they raided his house and they just like arrested all of his housemaids and whoever was working there diddy was free to roam and travel and his plans to travel to hawaii or whatever he went it was like days before that and people don't know if maybe he had maybe advanced knowledge of what was about to happen some guy it's so crazy that there's phones everywhere some guy caught diddy pacing outside i believe the miami airport and he's just pacing around and you can tell he's like fuck my whole life is over what do i do but he had full reign to travel he, he's allowed to travel he's not i don't think he's charged with anything yet because it was like a civil suit right focus and then the, all that shit came out from that so he was able to leave but everyone's like oh no diddy is fleeing he's fleeing he's trying to get away but uh, no he was allowed to travel. Wiggas, bridges falling down. Oh, I got something for you, Focus. Let me see if I find it. It's the funniest song. Sure enough, this is going to be the guy who like claims me the hardest because it's such a... Hold on. If I can find it. These are the real Wiggas, Focus. You have no idea. You're going to have to battle rap these guys I think I look I'm about to tell you about my wiggers if you don't respect my wiggers you gotta respect my wiggers cause you gotta respect my wiggers first you gotta respect me then my wiggers you know that you gotta never try to mess with us cause they are worse wiggers they even really forgot for mercy of us At first it was like warning, not get it story. I ain't no gangster or I'm not starring I'm not killing us in a not murder dog But if we tryna mess with us, I'm gonna burn it all Who got a black soul with a white skin called we got You ain't got no right to call him we got I'm not racist, <laughs> keep calm we got I prefer not Iggy's, but biggest color we got No matter what I we got. look like we got black soul and white skin No matter how we look like We got black skull Black soul Skin white? Wait We look like We got black soul and white skin No matter what we look like We got a black soul and white Skin That's a weird Chorus structure. But we look this should be your theme song for your show now. Not Iggy's, but biggest color we got. No matter what we look like, we got black soul and white skin. I'm a little rap till night, till I can't rhyme and write. No matter what we look like, we got black soul and white skin. Change rap from that time. I don't think this is satire. His name's Mad Kid Ma Wiggas. He's on Vivo. It was seven years ago. Eight eight point eight K views. This ain't this isn't viral. I found some underground artist gem from seven years ago. Is this you, Focus? Let it be Are you in this group. <laughs> I'm the white park. Be a rapper when I listen to the my block. You wanna I used to 
want to be the rapper and listen to the my block come on tell not my luck so tell me if i'm lucky but i don't ride on the my block my block when money come then money go the fame shit can blow like a bubble gum but my brothers never come apart if my wiggers are here i don't need no bodyguard nobody knows that if i want my wig i can find where your hoes at jesus man is that satire? I don't know. You decide for yourself. What time is it? 11.06. Okay. I think it's time. It did have some fun. There was another thing I wanted to talk about. Like, uh, I have these really funny stories of when I took mushrooms as a kid. But maybe I'll save it for next time. I had a whole thing, right? I play music and set the atmosphere. They can turn the lights off and we can discuss the story. But yeah, I'm going to end when I'm on top here. Everything went mostly smoothly. The mic being low sucks. Sorry about that, guys. Something always goes wrong with this shit. Fucking pain in the ass. <sighs> J Dummy, this music really speaks to me. ESG so show Slim Jesus. Yeah, I've seen Slim Jesus. That guy's like meme, memeified, certified memeified. These these wiggas are. I don't know. It's it's very questionable. Where are they from? They sound kind of English in a way. This is pretty cool. So one of my friends turned me on to this guy named Budman, and. A lot of his songs sound kind of repetitive because they're all about the same subject. About like this girl that he broke up with, but it's just like this album. And he just recommended this to me randomly. I'm not saying it's the best stuff, but it was like unique, you know, unique. And surprisingly, it turns out he lives like it's very close to me. It's very weird. Just by chance. But I think before this, he did other music that wasn't. And he had, the girl that he's always rapping about is in his music and his videos and stuff. And then he broke up with her and then he started this album. It's weird, but it's a weird style, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's like this weird voice. You don't want love, I've been there. You don't want love, my dog, I've been there Sat on the bus and ran out of trust I counted his luck, I watched them kiss I walked out, shook his hand Firm grip like a fucking man Like, you don't know who the fuck I am But these Budman fans, they would love a chance To come cut your hands like a fucking fan Summer plans were to fuck my girl for a month in France Had girls rolled into rubber bands Now she's off my dick for another man's No fucking chance I ever would've thought it would end like that The flags are red like that but a text on red like that is know, I've never heard anything that sounds like that. That's the it's weird. But uniqueness is always a good thing. They're all kind of that similar. The dick's gonna get sucked on this weekend. The ex girl cheated, but now I act like she dead. I wanted to die with her till I peeped inside my DMs. Budman is a free man, the whole life revamped and renovated I'd be celebrated, but I'm freaking out inside I shot and cried about it live streaming Like I might as well just end it if it's like this until the end is Budman That's pretty good, that's pretty good It sounds unique and different That's a good, but kind of like cuckold music like all the music, all the songs on this album is like, my girlfriend is cocking me. Maybe I'll play us out with that. I, I'm going to reach out to Bud, man. Maybe I can get him on here. Talk to him. Maybe I can get him to do my theme song. What happened, King Nomad, by the way? King Nomad, I saw you were here tonight. Where is my intro song? Remember, I told you to go listen to So A Paul by Kanye West to the instrumental. You said you're really good at making beats. And you said you could make a song in that style. If anyone else can do it, let me know. Maybe I'll give you something for it.
like P. Diddy style. I'll diddle you for it. I want, so Kanye West, So Appalled, the instrumental of that track, there's a part of it that I really like. It's like after the initial intro. It's, it's, it's very synth based. I like that kind of uh, style. That's the thing that first came to my head. But I'd like to have like a really cool intro song that's memorable. Maybe I might just have to make it myself. I don't know. But uh, let's see. I'm going to say some goodbye to you guys and I'm going to get out of here. It's uh, 11.10 p.m. now. Again, where is the simping? Oh, Danny from L.A. Do we know if this is the real Danny from L.A.? LGBT Danny from L.A., openly gay Danny from L.A. Let's see what he say. Hey, I'm Bleach. Remember me from Gonzo Podcast. Were you on that, Danny? I'm gay now, bro. I was the only Mexican with Gonzo. Ha ha ha. I question if this is the real Danny now. Is this weird reactions? You never, I don't know if you, I don't know. Danny, is that really you? You'll have to prove it next show and call in. I haven't heard from you in a long time. Devin says, music has been around for centuries. AI seems evil to me. I don't think it's evil. I just think that we have to take a stand against it and say, no, we're not going to use it as a replacement for creativity. We'll use it as a tool to make creativity easier. But nobody's going to sign up for that. Most of people are going to be lazy and they're going to be like, uh, it's easier to just let the AI do it. And then you guys are just going to be stuck with AI channels where it's an AI voice commentating over an AI clip and then nothing will be real. And then you'll have videos of Joe Biden having sex with Trump and then we won't know if it's actually real or not because it looks so real. I got fooled by that fucking uh, Little Wayne. That's the first AI clip that I've been fooled by. That Little Wayne clip talking when he's sitting next to P. Diddy. Until you guys said something, I totally believed it because it sounds like Little Wayne. And it even had the, like, the cadence and the thought process of what Little Wayne would say in an interview in that moment, even using the metaphors of like, did he saying you have to be out of this world and then little Wayne saying watch out for these astronauts guys like this whoever made that that it's fucking scary how realistic that was Edimon says I'm starting a channel called Lossless Historia oh no I'm so scared I feel like all news anchors are AI they could be that's the thing the AI that we have is just the free shit or the $3 a month shit that they're giving us and showing us that we have access to, that means that the people in the industry and the powerful people have a version way beyond that. They have like Wally Dolly version 10 or chat GPT version 20, where you probably, we have been probably watching fake shit on these screens for a long time. Maybe I'm not even real. Who knows? You'll never know. But I, I do believe there's newscasters probably there's probably whole news programs that are fake and they've been testing it out on us to see if we uh, pick up on it you ever see that thing where they show how all the news stations read the same script and then it's the compilation of hearing them open the same news story headline with the same sentence and they put all the blocks together how far is that from being AI anyway they're all programmed Bots. Let's see. Suit party. I made her cry on stream, idiots. Y'all gonna be mad when she lets me hit. Nah, man. Run. Suit party. Run. Run, man. Get out of there. I, I seriously, not even uh, ironically, I'm telling you. You're gonna lose your mind. Uh, focus, but they're going to bring charges for sure. He hired Gislaine's attorney. <laughs> Is that a troll? That's me and my team in 2001, right before 9-11. Damn. Nice. Let's see. Uh, fresh news. This reminds me of dog poo. Jonathan Contis. We was vultures. That's true. Kanye's whole concept of that album very genius actually vultures 
Vultures, guys. Vultures. You gotta watch out for them. You gotta watch out for these guys. When you show up, they're waiting. They've been waiting for something to cover or talk about for years. And they've been just spinning their tires in the mud. And then someone comes along, they're like, oh boy. Someone new. Mm. They've like they've been bored for fucking years and they don't know that like me showing up is like oh thank god. I feel like these guys have just been waiting for this shit for so long. Let's do f fucking 80 hours of content about this. Every message, every word this man says. Why is she a frog? I don't know what you mean. Focus it up. What's up, K? Pretty best in rap. Too sweet. Pistol Pete. Let me see your wife. Yeah, this too sweet Pistol Pete thinks that Unbleached's wife is fake. He's like, you have a fake wife. She's real, dude. I've she's like I've seen her speaking in uh, discords and stuff. Um, I don't know. Maybe be, if people live in a world where everything's a gimmick and fake. Maybe they think everyone else is faking things too. Burning Desire by Mike. One of the all-time best hip-hop albums by Mike? Are you talking about the same Mike? Focus CDS. He's not whack. Some skill there for sure. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's original and the guy's local. Maybe I can collaborate with him or get him on the show or something. That'd be cool. I want to have more guests. It's fun to do that. I gotta be in control. I I hope I did a better job this time. I, I like Mark likes to tell stories and and go. And there's nothing wrong with that. I like what people who are able to continue a conversation and just keep giving you information. This time I try my hardest to just interject, because it's ultimately up to me to be in control of that. But thank you, Mark, for coming on there. GGG. AI has no soul, says Devin. The Beatles ones are good, but shouldn't exist. Nah, you don't, yeah, you don't need AI Beatles. The Beatles are already, you can go back to their music. They have a bunch of it. Bunch of unreleased shit. We don't need fucking AI. We don't need to bring Tupac back with AI. I've heard some really good Tupac AI tracks. We don't need it. He hired her attorney. Not a great look, really. You're not kidding. That's fucking weird. That's what I'm saying. This all this is all connected. The Epstein P Diddy is the black version of Epstein, and it all goes back to this. Yep. Meyer Lansky. Look into it, folks. You don't believe me, Meyer Lansky. How it started. Blackmailing J. Edgar Hoover with sexual blackmail of him having sex with a gay guy, and then J. Edgar Hoover was like, "Damn, this is a good idea." Let's team up. And then we can go and extort other people and blackmail them. And then from there, who's the most embarrassed about being gay? The black culture. Let's put it onto them. And teach them. And then you got a P. Diddy and a Jay-Z who learned this technique. And now they're applying it to everyone in the rap industry. And that we're just seeing that level of it now. That's all this is. Nothing different. Pretty much, I think now... So many white people buy into, we were talking about Eminem, he's the one who got so many people to buy into black music who weren't before. We're next. So I am now being careful of who I associate with, become friends with, endorse, by the way. You never know, a lot of creepy guys out there. I have to vet people very carefully, no new friends. So what Mike was saying that before, no new friends, normie friends, internet people are internet people. You can associate with them, but otherwise it's every man for themselves. You can give respect and hopefully get it back. That's all I'm here for. I, I learned my lesson. I am not bringing up any other creators against my will. If you guys even ask or donate for it, I can't do it anymore unless I want to do it myself because I've just learned something that you don't, uh, yeah, it's not worth it, guys. 
not worth it. Uh, I put all for all the energy I put in there and even trying to be a nice guy because, you know, initially I am a nice guy. I try to return the energy I'm given. And I thought I did a nice thing. And in return, I just got a lot of energy wasted and nothing out of it. And I'm so thankful we're past that. That whole arc is over. It's boring. People want to continue it. Go ahead, but I'm out of it. Yeah, I'm Bleach says, my kid is fake too. <laughs> right, we haven't seen the pictures. Let us see your kid. That's something Jimmer, Jimmer would say. Oh yeah, let me see your kid. You never see your kid. Let's see a picture. Let's hear. Record a voice memo. Send it to me privately. We're getting married next weekend. All right. Well, I wish you luck on the marriage. Wives are nice. Very true. Well, Peachy's eye. You can tell Bleachy has a wife and kid now. Seems happier, more laid back. Yeah, on Bleach, everyone used to seem to say that you were super angry back in the day. Is that true? I think that's just that's just a style. It's a valid style to just be bitter and angry. Why can't that be a, a character? That's how we are. Uh, you know, East Coast people, they bitch a lot. We critique a lot. We talk shit a lot. That's just how it is. Whitney Webb wrote an 800-page book about Epstein. She had to narrow it down. Yeah. Why does the room look dark and depressed like Bleachy now? Because I turned off the lights there, Pistol Pete. Where's your wife, Pistol Pete? Where's, where's your wife? Show us your wife. Show us your stomach. And why are you a f why are you pretending to be another guy? It's weird. Mike just copies old Drake songs now. Uh, Robin says, someone earlier said Too Sweet Pistol Pete was a nice guy and has been on the internet for a long time. Thank God that was clarified because otherwise I might have had the wrong idea. Hmm. Yeah, imagine that. <laughs> Refected Mushroom, right? You a common law Mary. Robin gets half your tools. True. Jack Mahab, always judge internet YouTube retards. Keep them away. Yes, guys. If any of you out there have any aspirations to make content or do anything, this is what I've learned so far from doing this. And this is episode seven. Like, I just started this. I haven't even barely begun to do what I really want to do. The vision of what this is in my head. This is like 1% of it. This is shit this is complete shit but i said i want to start with it. everything i already have i'm not doing anything crazy and then i will evolve from there i'm not even close to that but already the moment you put yourself on here there's going to be people and they're going to shit on you and they're going to say you suck and they're going to try and discredit you because when you're doing something new and they see you doing it they want to try and like discredit it and make you feel bad so if you're going to do this shit, you just got to have a thick skin and not give a fuck about any of it. And it's hard to do. Most of it I ignore. Like I've had thousands of Red Bar fans show up here and just like say all this shit. It just goes in one ear and out the other. I don't even care. It's more of the um, when it's more personal and you know the person a little bit more. And then you start giving energy into it. So don't do it. That's Mike. Mike has that shit down. Mike has that shit down. That's what I'm saying. If I'm going to compliment them in any way, that's the perfect way to be. You isolate yourself. You do the content. And then you just get the fuck out. You do not associate with other creators. You do not hang out with them. Uh, you can make close friends with some. Like I have friends from like 10 years ago from my old pod trash days that I'm still friends with today. Most of them I met in real life. So that's the difference. But... No new friends, like Drake says. You don't need them. You can have associates, no new friends. And don't let anyone stop you from doing you what you want to do, right? Nobody can stop you. They would have to come here and shoot you in the head with a gun. I'd... Go ahead and try it. King Nomad already tried, and he failed. 
Okay. You should use puppets like they did on Kermit and Friends. That will take you to the top. Yeah. Elisa Jordana. I wonder how she's doing. I bet she's not even... She's still doing that stupid IRL streaming. By the way, is it, I'm going to try to think of what, what do you guys want me to cover because there's people I can cover. I remember someone was suggesting like, oh, you should cover like this Dabbleverse stuff. And it's so funny because like you got all these guys that cover these, the Shuli network and Stuttering John. And it's funny, like I'm the guy who would have probably the most knowledge of that like Howard Stern universe and Bob Levy, all these people. And I know it's just so funny to see like their arch nemesis is like a Milton or something. Like, do you know how much shit I know about the stern shit? Like the fact that like Shuli started a network, used to work for a billionaire number one radio guy who has a million dollar studio. And then their show looks like shit and sounds like shit. How could you even let that happen? Like that's sacrilege. You, you came from, if I had the opportunity to work for Howard Stern and I was in that studio, I would have been like around the studio, like learning how the cameras work. How does Howard TV film this? How do they do the lighting? Uh, let me look at, how does Howard have his equipment? So I could keep in mind, instead of Shuli's like, I'll be a comedian. That's what he chose to do with his time working for Stern. Like he was the news guy with the microphone who would go around and interview people the replacement for stuttering John, essentially. That's what he chose to do. And he learned nothing from it. Now they're like on a stream yards. They're using, they're using stream yards. The worst microphones, they sound awful. They have weird green screen backdrops. Like, wouldn't you have learned anything from Stern? I don't know. <sighs> Alisa Jordana. I mean, this woman too. I know way too much about her. Go go in her chat and say whoosh dish mean to her. She'll fucking have a heart attack. 3.2K views. She's been doing this for a long time. 600 videos. She has like, so what is, why? Elisa Jordana, Elisa Kerman and friends, Elisa Jordana, Elisa Jordana, four channels. Shuli is taking uh, WATP or what are these podcasts down with him? It, is what are these podcasts associated with Shuli now? Is it part of the Shuli network? Robin Girl, LOL Jack. Pistol Pete Thousands. I don't know what you're referring to now. You can, you just have to be choosy. Yeah, no, no. I Associate and friend are two different things. Associate is a guy you may talk to about maybe life or content creation, but as far as like friend, friend, where you share personal details and you can trust, okay, the things that I'm saying to this person privately, I don't have to every, it doesn't even cross my mind that it's going to be blasted out somewhere or uh, affect anything but when it comes to yeah I, I don't know I ha I already have a friend group of close friends those are the people I trust you just got to be careful who you let into your circle and and things I don't know there's so many egos involved in this whole thing that people it, it gets to the point like this whole shit that's been going on lately it gets to the point where it's just basically selfishness to serve the own ego, forgetting about the actual people watching. Now it's just about the guys battling each other. It was like, really all that from a $10 donation that asked me to talk about you and I gave you a compliment and then in the end, in return, that's what happens. Uplift the people around you. Elevate. I was saying this. I was saying this uh, the other day or yesterday. That's, that's where I come from. I had a network. Elevate the people around you. YouTube's hard enough. All of us as smaller creators. Elevate the people around. If we're so busy criticizing, and I get that that's, that's one of the things that people love, like these shows that go after very, very tiny creators. 
and I get it. I get the appeal of that. But then when I think about it in the grand scheme, it's like, is this really like detrimental to ourselves? Because uh, who is the real enemy? Who is the real enemy other than like the biggest people on YouTube, the, the, the elites of YouTube? Shouldn't those be the people that you're going after? But if it, you're, you're just on here to waste the time and talk shit about a, a Shuli, I don't know. I could do it. I could shit down Shuli's neck. But just elevate people, I don't know. That's what I always did. It was cooler to have like a network of shows and then you're all elevating each other. I bet Shuli got that. Yeah. That's funny, actually. Shuli. Shuli and JD Harmeyer were the two people who used to take pod trash clips and then give them to Howard Stern for him to play on the air, which is kind of weird to think about now because he started a network, and a network is what we were doing. So he could have got the idea from there. Pod trash. Um, radio that's just... yeah yeah history of pod trash promotion yeah off a lot a lot of those meds can't just stop taking them because if you just stop taking them it's going to have a negative effect on you i'm on well yeah, this is like 22 minutes Wait. i'm not of how i'm on 20 different medications wow meanwhile joey boots is like the dr oz of the whack pack <laughs> and joey boots is the size of a house too and he's advising eric a two okay yeah 25 minutes of this so Yes, and they figured it out too. Okay. Spend the night in the hospital. Okay. Of Oreo. Yes, and they figured it out. Aired into style, but. And eaten. All? All. Alright, so, fine. I had two small granola bars. Okay. So, you, you go, oh. It, you'll lose weight if you eat five small meals. Fuck you. This is like millions of Oh, wait, of wait, 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 wait. You got a six pack of beer right now? Saturday night. I just. When he does. No. He doesn't, not... he doesn't really drink too much. Oh, weed. You don't. Oh, yeah. It just gets worse and worse. That's all you do, though, Eric. Though you smoke weed. You don't do anything else, right? That's me. No, because I just smoking weed. Well. Do you drink alcohol? He doesn't. Not... He doesn't really drink too much when he does. No. I bought a six this is after a high pitch Eric said he was sober and he wasn't doing any drugs or anything. And then I, I ask him a question. He reveals that he's just bought a six pack of beer. Pack of beer. Because I, it's Saturday night. I just want to have a beer. Oh, wait, 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 wait. You got it's Saturday night. I just want to have a beer in a pot. Got a six pack of beer right now? Yeah. Eric. Oh, shit. <laughs> Eric. <laughs> You're on a fucking diet, dude. <laughs> I know, but I just need a beer and a pot. <laughs> you need beer and pot? Yeah. Eric, I gotta really talk to you, bro. I gotta talk to you, man, because uh, you, you really, you, you're scaring me right now again. You yeah. Know? Why do you want to stop all the junk food and then drink beer? That's that's just that's. <laughs> Voitech, pot trash, OG. No, because because it's, it's, it's all so junk food. No, because it's, it's, it's Oktoberfest, that's why. Yeah, but that, <laughs> all that, that turns immediately into sugar as soon as you drink it. Eric, Eric, it, you, it's so fattening, dude. Yeah, this was all cool. That was a cool time period. But yeah, Shuli uh, and J.D. Harmeyer were instrumental in sending a lot of these clips because they used to listen to our shows and then clip them and then give them to Howard. So salute to Shuli and JD for doing that. But it's just weird now. Shuli has a network like Pod Trash Network. And I don't know. We like the, fucking 10 years ago, we had better green screen fucking visuals. <laughs> and StreamYards. No, hell no. It used to be like Rabbit. They had Google Hangouts, Rabbit. This Elisa Jordana. 
whose show started because of pod trash basically uh was using spreecast and all these companies go bankrupt and you know why because you got these weird fucking guys the barrier of entry is so low that anybody can get a microphone and get on it and start talking that you got guys like uh, this fox man sean if you guys seen him where the, he's just live all day just fucking nodding out and then falling out of his chair and drunk and having the police called on him and food sent to his house that's bandwidth this guy's using up all of fucking Streamyard's bandwidth so you got fucking thousands and thousands of these guys who just stream all fucking day long Streamyard's already is losing money. I think their valuation has been already sliced in half from Foxman Sean alone or Sam Hill alone. You got they went from like eight billion to four billion. That's why none of this shit ever, ever sticks around. Streamyards, unless Google or YouTube, I don't know. They're owned by some parent company, but it ain't YouTube or Google or fucking Microsoft or any of them or Amazon. Unless one of the those three buy it. Streamyards ain't gonna last either. It's funny. Julie should go back to work at the airport. Julie is friends with high pitch. No, yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah. The, all these guys were friendly with Julie. Like the Whack Pack was very close to Julie and JD, and then the Stern Show is the connected as the Whack Packers. Max uh, Barnes says, is this live stream different? YouTube isn't letting me rewind. Usually it lets you play the video at any point while it is still live. Yeah, the rewind is turned off just in case. Um, it makes it so if something fucked up happens on here, y you can fix it. And it's for a reason. It's for a reason. Uh, when I get things more dialed in, maybe I'll turn it off. But I should have never had it on to begin with because sometimes I fuck up. And it's a good safety net. Uh, let's see. Sue Party. Stern doesn't remember you, dude. Get real. Um, I'm sure he would, actually. He, know, he knows who I was. He knows who I was. He knew who I was when I ran the previous website where I was fucking pirating his content. That's what's so weird about this. The guy knew that I was stealing his content, basically. It was called file sharing at the time. And then I started pod trash after that with that stepping stone of having the community from that previous site to get a step up of doing this shit and having people even tune in in the first place. And he knew I was the same guy, but he still played it because he liked the content that I was making. And yeah, maybe now, okay, today, maybe he would forget about it if he didn't jog his memory. I don't know what point you're making there. I heard uh, someone was bragging about one of the, the Kenny guy being on Stern. I think it's pretty cool. You don't have to think it's cool. I think it's dope that a guy, a billionaire fucking radio guy, the number one radio guy, was listening to our clips and we were complete nobodies. This was a private fucking website. It wasn't on YouTube. It wasn't a part of all your social media and YouTube shit. I don't even like being here. But... He played it. He played it nonstop. People would pay millions of dollars for this kind of marketing to have anything played on. Like the ad spots on the Howard Stern show were worth like six figures for a 30 minute ad spot at that fucking time. So yeah, he loved it, but he knew I was the same guy. So he was uh, careful with how he talked about it. Because Joey would, Joey would be a trooper and he would always say, pot trash, gotta go to pot trash. Come on to my show, Howard. And he would try to crowbar it in there. And Howard gets so mad because he hated podcasters. He fucking hated podcasters. 14, yeah. and, uh, which we knew were coming. In fact, it's a miracle they <laughs> it, haven't developed it sooner. arrived a lot later than we expected. So one of the things is he was admitted to the hospital, and then they tried to put him on a diet. This was funny. Oh. <laughs> who? Julie is actually at the end of this, actually. Who, who is in this test? Yeah, like, like, that he can no longer do any podcast without him. But he doesn't want to do a podcast. Who do they do the test show? I like the test show. Wait, like, who do they do that for? Shuli's coming in. He's got the info. All right. Shuli's I like coming. that there's just a test show. Who, who is in this <laughs> test? test? Like, 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 in other words, who's the big boy? Oh, yeah. Where's you on Stern's soup potty? Nowhere. Go get on it. Show me your accolades. 
By the way, was it satire where you made that video of you and your friends shooting guns in the woods just happened to look exactly like Sam Hyde's video with iDubs of them shooting guns in the woods? And was it on purpose that you guys had horrible stances when shooting, like curling your back like this and showing zero confidence holding a fucking firearm? Was that satire or, I don't know, ir ironic or unironic or double meta irony? Boss that is sitting and evaluating the test show. Yeah, I, I think maybe they pay like Sam Hyde remembers you like monthly rate to do yeah. the show or something. So I he's got to fill in the, the quota. So somehow. like Gonzo had to go to the head of the company and say, like, I'm going to do a test show here and see how you like ass napkin. Head the company, yeah. Apparently, Eric is not uh, a fan of the negative uh, uh, yeah, the trolls. Know, feedback, the trolls. Right, the trolls. Right, so, he can't handle a lot of no. criticism. And I guess calls are an important part of their show, so yeah. they don't want to stop taking calls, but all the calls are just goofing on Eric. But isn't it funny to hear them all goof on Eric? Of course. Yeah, and hear the him only handle reason it. I tune in. Right. Right. Who the boss, nigga? Who the motherfucking boss? Who the boss, nigga? Who the boss? All righty, guys. All right, that's enough. I'm going to go to bed now. Thank you. Lawless got to shoot his food in Canada. Kenny, so let's start. Yeah, I was shooting White Claw Kansas satire. Got him. No, it was like frame by frame, a copy of Sam Hyde's video where you're even shooting the automatic guns with one hand. It's like frame by frame, just less confidence in shooting the weapons. It wasn't as cool. It looked gay. Got him. Thank you, guys. Good night. Good night. Suck my dick. Thank <laughs> you.